Two hours? Are you kidding me? Welcome to this very special two hour plus video here on Serpent ZA. I know this is not what you'll usually find on my channel, but you know, me and my best friend Sea Milk have done something which I think you're going to enjoy. I've got at my fingertips the state of the art of 1993 American sports car technology and what better way to test it out than to go on an epic road trip with my best friend over the west coast of America looking for, believe it or not, the most authentic Chinese food. So stick around. It may seem like a hell of a lot, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. I'm Serpent ZA. I'm Laowai86. Everybody knows and loves Chinese food. But if you're like most Americans, you may have never had the real thing. It's always chopped up, it's sweet and salty, and it's uh, usually a slop in a pot. I don't know anywhere else in the world, but in America where they have, you know, Chinese fortune cookies. <laughs> Do you have to go all the way to China to see what real Chinese food is? Or can you find true authentic Chinese food in America? We don't have that much Uyghur people in this area, especially in, even in America. Mostly we're using like the lamb, hand pulled noodle. We've lived in China for a combined 20 years, so we know what real Chinese food is like. We've had some of the weirdest, wildest, and most delicious food that China has to offer. That's why we're setting out on a 3,000 mile road trip all across the west coast of the USA to find out where, and if it's possible, to find authentic Chinese food. This is the quest for the best Chinese in the USA. Seamilk, where are we? We're in Arizona. Why are we in Arizona? We're here to fetch the Corvette. Now the Corvette needed a lot of expensive repairs, unfortunately. Stupid just because it's got the Corvette brand name, but we're going on an epic trip. And what are we doing? We're going to find the real, most authentic Chinese food that you can find in America. My yeah. home country, actually. Now, yeah. I've actually eaten Chinese food all over America before, but it's usually at these kind of imposter restaurants. Right? Oh yeah, we see them all over the place here. What was that, walk and roll? <laughs> There's <laughs> lots of good plays on words. They're even, here in Arizona, they're even still using the word oriental to describe uh, Chinese food and all these fusion restaurants, Chinese and Japanese fusion. But actually, it's just these all-you-can-eat buffets for about five bucks, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's not real Chinese food. No, it's not. And living in China for about 10 years and 12 years, yeah. combined over 20 years, Yeah we actually know what real Chinese food is actually like. Exactly. Now, uh, of course, this is America, but we already got the steaks and burgers and all that stuff out of our system, trust me. You it's... got your tie cut off in that restaurant. Got my tie cut off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enough cowboys, yeah. enough cacti. We need to hit the yeah. road, and we're going to head to California to find the best and most authentic Chinese food in America. Can't wait. The quest for the best Chinese in America. See you on the road. Man, we've been over these dunes and I don't see any Chinese food. I think we better uh, find another path. Oh, absolutely. Super pumped we're in San Diego, California. Beautiful day. Oh yeah, awesome stuff. It's, it's awesome out here. We got, you know, we got the sea, we got sun. It's, it's fantastic. We've actually been pointed in the direction of apparently what is said to be the best Baozi and Jiaozi restaurant in all of America. Which is pretty fantastic and it's a little ironic because the first restaurant we're going to try is, you know, it specializes in Baozi and the first video on my channel actually, all the way back in 2008, has got me going to a little breakfast stall and eating a Baozi. So I think it's kind of ironic. It is. Yeah. What is a Baozi though? Well, okay. Here's the thing. Uh, as we've discussed a lot, Chinese breakfast is pretty dire. Yeah, I, I think we could true. say it's probably like the weakest type of Chinese food. Yeah, for sure. Right? For sure. Yeah. But when it comes to Bowser, that's the one breakfast food that every foreigner, including myself and you, actually really likes. Right. It's basically a steamed bun, and inside you can get meat, vegetables, you know, all sorts of different fillings. 
and it's pretty delicious so I'm right. seriously looking forward to it me too now ironically also for me the first food I had in China after I got off the plane other than pig brains yeah. which is at the same restaurant was jiaozi yeah. and jiaozi is dumplings yeah now if you've had dumplings in Chinese restaurants here in America you've probably had pot stickers and those pot, are, what's it, why is it called a pot sticker <laughs> well because they stick to the pot because oh, they okay. use wonton wrappers okay and uh, they're really sticky really thick mm. much more similar to Japanese gyoza Right. So the ones that we have in China, you know, they're steamed, they're fluffy, they're full of all kinds of different fillings. You got lamb, yeah. crab, yeah. chicken, pork, all kinds of stuff. And I remember it being a very special meal for me because I had never had dumplings like that before. Well, we've heard through the grapevine that this, in fact, is the best place for this stuff. So I feel like we got to hit the road and enjoy the beautiful sunshine and seaside and yeah. uh, just get there. Yeah, can't wait. See you at the restaurant. My dad personally, he doesn't want to change the taste. He actually tried a lot of places um, in the U.S. in San Diego before he opened this restaurant. Just wanted to know how like Americans like the taste of Chinese food. When well, he tried it, and then he's like, "This is not Chinese food. I'm not gonna do the same thing." So that's why he started to do his own dumpling and the own bun. This食堂呢，是一家中国家庭式的中国餐馆，所以说这个做的味道的话呢，全部都是以家庭味道为主。这个我们主要的特色呢，就是这个酱肉包子。这个包子的话呢，我们是采取的是第一个馅儿足，第二个呢个儿大。这个让人看起来呢很有吸引力，而且呢味道的话呢很受美国人这边的欢迎。So Winston, the restaurant today in question has great wow. It's kind of a play on words, isn't it? Yeah, great wow. Yeah, that kind of thing. They are famous for their jiaozi, which we've explained uh, are dumplings, right? Yeah. Here we go. Over here. Turns out they have a lot of different kinds of jiaozi here. Oh yeah. It's not just one. And I was super pleased to talk to the boss here earlier. Yeah. And they're actually from Beijing. Mm. Now most of the Chinese people that you'll meet in Chinese restaurants in America are either from Guangdong Fujian. or Fujian, yeah, right? Yeah, Fujian or Guangdong. Yeah. So that was kind of a treat. And this is yeah. northern food, which we love. In yeah, particular. absolutely. Why don't you talk talk through what we got today? Well, first of all, we got this massive bowser over <laughs> here. This thing is huge. That is huge. huge. I mean, you know, so. <laughs> size of your face, really. It's kind of their specialty. I mean, they were explaining that they used to make the normal size ones, right. and then they decided to make bigger ones, kind of probably because Americans like big portions, to be right. honest. Get yourself um, a jazza. Which one you want? So these are going to be the pork and onion okay. jazza, and these are your classic, mm. classic jazza. But Absolutely. one thing you have to do if you're going to eat Chinese dumplings, especially northern style, is you're going to mix your own sauce. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I like to use a little bit of uh, chili oil. Okay. <laughs> mm. Okay, uh, and this is the soy sauce. I only use a little bit of soy sauce. I'm a I fan of soy sauce. Or I'm a fan of vinegar, so I go okay. all in on the bin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, they use dark vinegar usually for these yeah. dumplings. Yeah. And you take one. Some cheeky folk will cut one open and let the vinegar kind of soak inside. Yeah, yeah. I like to just get the casing on the outside soaked in. Good idea. Let's go for this bad boy. I'm let you in first, and we'll talk about it. Okay. I only like to just put soy sauce. I'm not interested in all that oh. vinegar malarkey. Whatever. So. <laughs> We're in America, you can be yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm going to just give it a shot. Well, that was a great. <laughs> Do you give yourself a little splash? I enjoyed okay, it so I, I enjoyed it so much I dropped it. <laughs> Let's try that again. Mm. Mm, fantastic. The pork inside of there is so well seasoned, and that's something that actually makes it better than a lot of jazz I've had in China. Mm. Is it actually seems like they actually marinated it, right? Yeah. yeah. Really good onion taste. A little bit of garlic, kind of garlic in there too. Yeah. A little bit, I would say, more care was put into the filling than most places I've had in China. Absolutely. And for authenticity, I mean, wouldn't you say the outside shell, like the noodle, is actually like a wheat-based noodle? I'd, I'd say that, to be honest, this is very high on the authenticity rating because I've had jiaozi are just like this exactly, in China. For exactly sure. the same. So I I'm, have to give it a 10. Yeah, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 for authenticity for the jiaozi. Absolutely. For sure. What about the taste? As for taste, I have to say this, and it might break some hearts in mainland China, but in a way, <laughs> 
it's one of the better jads I've had in my life. I'd say it's actually, it tastes fresher, it tastes like you can trust the ingredients inside of it. It's mm -hmm. just kind of bites the tongue a little bit with the onion and garlic. I, I like it quite a bit more than jads I usually eat. And I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 for taste. Okay, that's awesome. I mean, I'm not a big jowza guy usually, but I'm gonna give it an eight just because it is delicious. And you're absolutely right. You know, when you're working with the right ingredients, you know, you can really make a good recipe even better. So absolutely. So 10 out of 10 authenticity, eight out of 10 for taste for me. Sounds good. What's next? Shall we move on? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Awesome, eat it more. Mm. We love this place. Yeah, it's fantastic, right? <laughs> yeah. Now one thing we're really familiar with in China though mm -hmm. is Xiaolongbao, yeah. which translates to little dragon bag. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. they're kind of uh, yeah. Shanghai style dumplings. You soup in them, right? Yep, exactly. And what you do is you put them in a spoon, mm -hmm. you kind of puncture them so the, you know, the soup comes up. Be careful, it can be really hot, it so don't be. just throw it in your mouth. Mmm. Mmm. Good. Really good Xiao Long Bao. Okay. Awesome. I'm gonna go all, in, all natural. Mmm. Mm. I like how they, they actually like hand kind of knead all the dough and stuff and really put care into how it looks, which is really nice. Sometimes Absolutely. you don't get that in China. Yeah, not as much as this, but yeah. As for authenticity, 10 out of 10 again. Completely yeah. what you'd get I've, in China. I've had that in Shanghai. Absolutely. And of course, times. you get them in all the dim sum restaurants, things like that. That's really authentic. Yeah. And the taste? Again, for me, it's an eight out of 10. I give it, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Okay. I've had soupier ones. Okay. You know what I mean? But very, very good, very, very good stuff. Excellent, so the only thing remaining is our authentic Bowser. Yeah, this is the, <laughs> kind of the, the coup de grace. This is what we yeah. came here for, right? Oh, wow, Ooh, look at boy. that, look at that. That is, that is, that is steamy. Delicious. You gotta give me half of that one, then. Absolutely, here, you, you grab this. Yeah. Oh, it's hot, it's really it's hot. It's really, really hot. Give me a second. You gotta eat them when they're hot. That's <laughs> you gotta the eat them when they're hot, absolutely. Okay, we're gonna give it a shot. Mm. Oh yeah. Walking to work, mm -hmm. my first couple years in China, mm. hot roadside bazi. You don't really know what it is when you first get there. You know, what are these steamed buns? You get yeah. one, sometimes you get the veggie one, sometimes you get the meat one. It's ones. really cool the way it's prepared on the side of the road. It's like For sure. smoke billowing out with steam, really. Right. Especially on a cold morning, you just see this like steam and it looks right. so interesting. And everyone's crowding around and grabbing these hot steamy buns, you know? What makes these better than that mm -hmm. is that it seems like there's almost a gravy in it, right? Mm. Whereas it's not, you know how you'll bite into a bods in China, it's just kind of a brick of meat mm. and then you have to eat the bread around yeah. it. This is kind of soaking it all up and it's a nice gravy, it tastes delicious. It's, it is. Authenticity in a way is almost difficult to say because I like it better <laughs> than most bods I've ever had. Yeah. Does that make it less authentic? I don't think so. It's no, the no, same no. format. The, the ingredients are there, it's got the same flavor, it's just a little more so because they're using better ingredients. Right. It's definitely high up there on the authenticity. I'd say the bows are here, except for the Americanized uh, Kung Pao chicken ones. Right. The, the, you know, these ones are absolutely you know, top notch. I'd say definitely 10 out of 10. I'm definitely gonna say 10 out of 10. And for taste, I'm, I might go 10 on this one. I'm, Bao's is one of my favorite foods, so I'm a little biased, but I'm right. gonna go for a nine. And that's okay. just because I know you get better stuff out there. But this, in the world. Yeah, in the world, <laughs> you know. But as far as Bao's are, con are concerned, I don't think you get better than this. No, this mm. is, this is yeah. top notch. Definitely up there for sure. Oh, by the way, I can confirm, I think this is definitely the best Bazin Jaws I've had, had in America, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, um, what dish would you, if you could only pick one just dish, that, would you pick? Just, just the Bazin, you know, the pork, the normal pork Bazin. Right. Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna agree, agree with that, but I'm also gonna throw on, get this, get a plate of these uh, pork and onion Jaws as well. Yeah. These are just freaking awesome. I love yeah, these a lot. Amazing. And uh, it's really good to have this kind of stuff in America. It's strange almost. Yeah, you know, I'm used to, awesome. used to the lo mein and the General Tso's chicken. I mean, yeah, no, this is fantastic. So we, I think we can say it's a pretty authentic place. For sure. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, interesting. I really did not expect that to be as authentic as it actually was. It was, it was actually really authentic. It really, really was. Yeah. I. Uh, you know, the whole point of this trip is we're not trying to plug restaurants or anything. No. So if a restaurant's going to suck, it's going to suck. But I can't say that one did. No, it didn't. Absolutely not. And the boss is friendly. He can't speak any English, but his daughter, that's his daughter. Yeah. She can speak English just fine. Of course. And, you know, locals were walking past the door and saying, hey, this place is awesome. Yeah, they're all shouting at us yeah. while we were shooting the video. It's pretty yeah. cool. No, I, I liked it. And, you know, I was kind of expecting this trip to be all about you know, spring rolls and sweet and sour chicken and general toes, this and that. But we're 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 off to a good start. That was really good. We absolutely are. Well, tomorrow we have a big day ahead of us. Ready to hit the road? I sure am. Let's do it.
welcome to Roland Heights, California. This is actually a suburb of um, Los Angeles. It's bizarre. It I is. Mean, I'm, I, I mean, where where are we? Is this America? I you can. I mean, everything looks like American buildings and everything, but everything is in Chinese, and this isn't even a Chinatown, dude. Yeah, I know. It's it's really bizarre. Everywhere you look, you see Chinese. You know, the interesting thing is that uh, you know, what what are you doing? They even drive like China. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but well, looking around, everything is Chinese. Yeah, everything. I, except, I must say that everything is in traditional characters, so not simplified. So it's probably got something to do with Taiwan or Hong Kong. Around yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple simplified signs, but most of it, you're right, has been yeah. in traditional Chinese. Yeah. It's weird to see not just Chinese restaurants with Chinese characters on them, but like real B- estate, businesses, businesses, d- dentists, dentists. <laughs> uh, what yeah. else? Like cell phone companies. Yeah. Everything yeah. in Chinese, and we're here smack dab in America. I actually feel a little bit out of place. You know? Yeah, I wonder what would happen if we opened like an English-only area in uh, in China. What they'd say? I don't think that would work. No, they'd probably come shut us down, wouldn't they? <laughs> a couple of funny little yeah. instances as well. Some of the places you stopped for gas and stuff. Yeah. Uh, bought a drink at a little supermarket. Yeah. No one spoke English. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I like. I tried to speak English, and I just had to switch to Chinese. And they didn't say like act it like it was weird that I was speaking Chinese. It's kind of like yeah, that's what you do in this area. It's really bizarre. It is. Anyway, it's kind of wintry. It's a little bit cold. Although let's be fair, it is California. It's never really cold here, right? right. It's a little bit cold though, and. Uh, one of the best things to eat in winter, Chinese food-wise, is hot pot, right? Right. We're not talking about overly heated up marijuana. This is actually a <laughs> pot full of... Uh, <laughs> what? I never would have thought of that. Anyway, uh, yeah. hot pot is basically this cauldron of boiling oil and broth that you dip your own food into. Yeah. And uh, it's a Mongolian thing. It's also a Sichuan thing. It's all over China, really, too. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's incredibly popular, and every city in China has it, and you get all sorts of specialties all over the place. Sichuan hot pot's really, really popular. Right. Chongqing hot pot's really popular. One of my favorites, Xiao Fei Yang, you know, little fat sheep. Right. Um, but yeah, we haven't actually arranged anything. No. We're going to look for a good Sichuan hot pot place. I've seen a couple signs around here at least. But you know what's funny is that I always thought Chinese food could really take off in America at yeah. some point, right? Like real yeah. Chinese food because it's awesome. But I always thought hot pot's never going to take off because of the lawsuits and liability issues. Yeah, because it's basically a big cauldron of boiling oil, right? right. And if you, you've got kids or something there, what if you drop something in there, it splashes them or, right. you know, that kind of thing. But lo and behold, there are hot pot restaurants here. What do you reckon we pull in pull in over here? There's a whole bunch of Chinese restaurants here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got what, the spicy moment, this and... and yeah, yeah, actually, okay. there's a bunch. Yeah, so let's pull in How about see. this La Meidze one? <laughs> Yeah, okay. La Meidze. You know, you know <laughs> for, for those of those of you who don't know what La Meidze means, it means hot girl, you know, like right. spicy sexy girl, girl sexy basically. Girl. Yeah, it's, it, it literally translates to spicy girl. It's kind of There, that's his La Meidze Ho Guo. Yeah, let's do it. That'll be a real Sichuan. Or maybe Chongqing. Yeah, i got to tell you, though, like, not having not actually planned this, we're just going to have to walk in there and... Just run and gun. <laughs> just run and gun and see if they've got a manager, see if he'll let us film. But okay. so far, everybody has been really nice to us in America, so sure. I don't think they're going to turn us away. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Our restaurant name is Sancheng Lamet. Sancheng means a mountain city in English, not a word. The Lamet in English is like spicy girl, because we sell spicy stuff, hot stuff. Hot pot has a soup and then you cook in the middle of the table and the customer will cook all the, everything like by itself. So we have a spicy and a non-spicy, two different flavors. Because the hot pot is really good winter food and then when you eat like, you know, spicy flavor, strong flavor, flavorful. And uh, you can eat like all, a lot of different stuff inside. Most people that will cook like lamb, beef, vegetables, and uh, even the dipping sauce. You can dip with uh, a lot of different dipping sauce. Hot pot in America was not something I expected to see, to be honest. It definitely wasn't here when I was in America about 10 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I remember people telling me like that 
there are branches of Xiao Fei Young and right. Heidi Lao opening right. in America, and I was like, wow, that's interesting. Like, right. would Americans actually go for that, you know? For sure. Now, this place is kind of typical of your normal Chongqing or Sichuan hot pot that you would get in China. We'll yeah. say it's a little nicer. Yeah. And uh, I mean, kind of just by looking at some of the quality of the ingredients and some of the freebies that you mm. get. So basically, you start every meal with these handmade, what are these? Uh, they're sesame balls okay. and uh, little cakes and stuff, and they, they make them right here, apparently. Apparently, these hand are hand rolled, hand rolled, handmade sesame balls. Let's try yeah. one. Yeah, I'll give one a shot too. A little appetizer while we wait for the hot pot to uh, boil. I have to point out that I haven't seen a single white face or brown <laughs> face or any other kind of face in this restaurant, so it must be really good because they're all Asian. Yes, so they approve yeah. of it, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. I hear I hear Chongqing dialect. I'm here in Sichuan dialect. Yeah. I'm here mm -hmm. in Mandarin in the background. So. I mean, if the locals approve, I almost said locals. Well, we're in America. It doesn't feel like it right now. People around us keep calling us foreigners. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. in my own I know, country. I know. What's that? It's a very nice little sesame. There's some sesame in the middle. Okay. And it's quite fluffy, a little greasy. Okay. But it's nice. It's different to that, I think. Mm. It's a nice little little starter, you know? Mm. Mm. It's like a piece of sesame toast. Mm. Thing is, I ha I've had these in China plenty Many of times. times. Mm. The difference is, mm. you would not get those for free in a Chinese restaurant in China. People would swoon in over the mm. freebie aisle and just start mm -hmm. ripping mm -hmm. them all out, stuffing them in their purses and mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, a, it's a different story over there. For sure. Mm. Now, it's starting to boil here. Basically, what we got here is your typical half and half pot. Except it's a little weird. I've never mm -hmm. seen it like this. It's normally they call it a yin yang, mm -hmm. and they actually have it like a yin and yang. They have it, um, you know, in the shape of yin and yang, right. and it's spicy and then the mm. normal broth, right? Mm. This and is just going to cut down the middle. Yeah. Yeah, so first square hot pot I've seen. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, we got mm -hmm. lamb, mm -hmm. we got beef belly, yep. which is nyo nan, right? Mm -hmm. We got uh, winter melon, donggua. Mm -hmm. I got a single egg because I've never cooked just a normal egg in a hot pot before. I thought that might be a little interesting. Yeah. We got a vegetable kind of combo. Mm -hmm. So it comes with cabbage and spinach and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. And then I also got uh, some tripe, some beef tripe, just for you. Okay. Well, okay. thank you, because you know I hate that stuff. <laughs> but well, we're looking for authenticity, aren't we? For sure. Uh, now, it would be a little bit weird and a little bit boring just to dip this stuff in here yourself mm. and just eat it out of the pot, obviously. Yeah. Now, the whole thing about Chongqing hot pot is it comes with dipping sauces. Correct. Why don't you run Correct. us through what we got here? Well, basically, they've got a little condiment section over there, and what you do is you can actually build your own sauce. They have a couple of recommendations up there. They say those sort of spicy girl recommendation and stuff, but here, you know, you put this together, so yeah. what did you put in there? Some kind of lao gama? Lao gama is like the really famous chili oil sauce, sauce paste yeah. stuff. Yeah. And yeah. then I guess some bean paste, some cilantro or coriander, mm -hmm. and some Chinese chives. Yep. And that's kind of the more savory version. The sweeter version over here. Yeah, let me get that out. Is I got the mushed up chives. I got yeah. the garlic, and then There's I got the of sweet peanut sauce and some peanuts themselves. Yeah, yeah. I like this. I so yeah, good. what you do is you're gonna mix that, mix right. that around into and a little kind of, bit of a paste. Yeah, and then you know once the meat's cooked or whatever's cooked, you take it out, just dip it in there, and you eat it. For sure. And this is all up to you, really. They had a ton more options for sure. This is usually what I get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, that, I'm I'm very straightforward. I just normally have soy sauce. For sure, I got you. Maybe a couple of things, depending. Now, there's yeah. one thing here that you can't eat, so we'll save that for last, and that's the mushed up shrimp stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's It right. looks weird as hell. I have seen it before, and it kind of turns into like little logs of shrimp. Yeah, no, I'm looking Sasha that. gets that. She likes that. Yeah. Okay, your wife likes that. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, a little pro tip mm -hmm. is use the back of your chopsticks when you pick up some of yes. the raw meat, because yes, you don't yes, want to yes. be eating that raw meat, right? Yeah. I mean, what do you say we start with half the lamb and then half the beef? Yeah, what sounds good to me. Do you want the lamb to be spicy or the beef? I don't mind either way. I'm good either way. Let's go yeah. lamb. I like the taste of lamb, so let's put sure. that in the normal. Sure. Sure. The beef will go spicy. I got medium spicy. You could go like crazy ape, ape spicy if you ape want spicy. to. Now, the sure. manager um, of the restaurant said that, you know, hot pot comes from Chongqing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's not Up necessarily <laughs> true. <laughs> right. This style. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Mm. Apparently, this is this is the legend, is that Genghis Khan, mm -hmm. you know, in Mongolia, needed a way to keep his soldiers fed while they're on the march, right? Because okay. they're, you know, they ride their horses and everything, and sure. they're conquering and pillaging and doing their thing, right? But they don't have time to sit down and really make camp and set up, right. and so they have to have something that's really quick to eat. Right. So what they did was, they actually used to take their steel helmets, the mm -hmm. metal helmets, right? 
and then boil them, just make a campfire, stick the steel helmet on the fire, throw water in there, like boil it, and then just throw bits of random meat that's or whatever. That's super just to cool. Cook it. Yeah. So that's apparently where hot If that story is true, that's awesome. Yeah, no, and I'm I would fully, sure I would fully believe that over whatever story I heard. I'm before. pretty sure that's that's the the one, origin. One yeah. thing that they definitely didn't do, the Mongols, was put a bunch of chilies and make it super spicy like this, right? Well, I mean, chilies are a new world food anyway. They are, right? right? So it comes from America or South America, wherever, you know. Should we try the lamb? Mmm. 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 Mm. I have to say this real quick. Yeah. And peanut really sauce good. and the lamb is better than any any I've had in China yeah. at a hot pot restaurant. Just because of the quality, it tastes fresh. It's the quality of the meat, but I mean, once again, when you're talking about using better ingredients, right? Um, of course, it's going to taste better. Of course, of course. So we have to think about authenticity here. Right, right. And if you knock me out and put me here and didn't tell me where I was, I think I was in China. Mm. Try some of this sauce here. Mm. I think right. you'll like it. Mm -hmm. um, but the lamb and the beef both taste a cut above the rest in terms of freshness and quality. Oh yeah. Not as fatty as what you'd get in China, to be honest. Mm. Mm. It's really good sauce, isn't it? <laughs> good choice, good choice. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm gonna pop some of these tripes in, okay? Okay, now this is something, you know, uh, yeah. Sea milk apparently likes this. Now, Anyway, the thing is, I, I didn't grow up eating offal and tripe, and I, I think offal is awful. I was going to make an awful joke. Why'd you have to steal it from me? <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, so I really don't like anything that's organs, so livers, lungs, hearts, kidneys, all that kind of stuff, I really can't stand. And it's really popular in China. But this is, this is why I like hot pot, okay? i got to tell you a bit of a story here. When I first got to China, because, you know, when you get to China, people are always taking you out right, and treating right, right. you to dinner right okay when you make, meet new friends make sure. new business acquaintances and it's part of the culture so they'll treat you right right and then they take you to what they believe is the best restaurant or the nicest right. restaurant that's nice and it is nice and then they they order everything for right. you right so they go ahead and they order xyz and it sucks man because like a lot of the stuff they order that they think is special or delicious or whatever is like really horrible right for for a western person you know right. we're talking fish heads chicken heads right, chicken right. feet you know like tripe blood blood sausages you know all sorts of weird sure. stuff which i'll be honest with you it's just like for someone that's got a normal western palate who's not growing up on a farm or whatever you know <laughs> i didn't grow up yeah on well a farm. who has a mother who grew up on a farm or yeah. whatever you know like it's not cool and right. you, you sit there and you can't really eat it it's no. It's disgusting, and you're trying to be polite, and you're trying your best. But I'm just saying, you know, of course it's delicious and it's special for them because they are used to it. Sure. So the reason why I like to go to Hot Pot is you get to choose what you eat. Sure. Right. Very customizable. Look, yeah. Look at this. Like I might be sitting here. Yeah, you've got the tripe. Right. Yeah, you've got the weird stuff. Right. I can eat that, and then you yeah. can have the other stuff. And then, right? then you're like, oh look, it's nice shaved beef or shaved right. lamb, and then you just grab a bit of that, and you know the way it works is you're actually supposed to take these ladles yeah for sure okay and you can push them out like that and um you just take like a piece of uh I'll take this little piece of beef here That's this is especially what you do if there's tons yeah, tons, tons of people at the table and so you know what's you, yours usually like everybody has a ladle sure right and then all you do is you cook it you actually cook it in the mm -hmm. in the ladle right right until it's and, and it's super quick yeah yeah it just depends on the the slice of the meat like how right. quick it is you can see that's not cooked that's yet not yet <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you know just depends it's getting there yeah, so I'll stick it in a nice boily bit there. Okay, I would say in a yeah. second. Probably. In a second. in a second. Now, I'll be honest with you. Usually there are serving chopsticks, like, you know. Yes. Because right now what we're doing is not the most hygienic, but we're used to it in China. We're so used to it. Yeah. I mean, that's what a lot of people yeah. do, right? Yeah. That's where I learned it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and then you pull it out. And there we go. And there so, you go. You have it's already, so you see. Super quick. You, you have your meat. Right. Over here, it's easy to get in, right. easy to get out, so you right. don't lose it in there because sure. you can lose stuff in there. You'll never be found. I, if I'm just eating with a friend or yeah. like my wife or something, I usually don't just, use just the ladles just because everything. everything's yeah, in yeah. there. You just kind of just push it dump out. it in there, yeah. But I mean, that's that's the correct way to eat it, right? For sure. um, and it's an incredibly popular dish during winter time. Yeah, and oh, it's, it's really cool to have at home as well. Yeah, it's like super. It's actually a really good party thing. Like yeah. you basically you can have people over mm. and they all get together and you all eat. But actually, what I was going to say was it's one of the, weirdly enough, mm. I don't know, you said you didn't see any uh, white people in here or, yeah, yeah. you know, ethnic 
uh, Westerner as I could say, yeah. in this restaurant. And I think it's a little bit strange because I feel like one of the most stereotypically popular dishes amongst expats in China is hot pot. Absolutely. They love it, right? It, it, it is a social thing. Usually there's a lot of beer involved. Right. Lots of beer. And okay, we're at a square table, which is a bit odd because usually hot around, pot right? is a round table. Right. So everybody sits around the table, right? They're drinking beer, they're eating whatever they want. It's right. usually, it's a winter food. Sure. There we go. There goes See this hairy little basket. Sea Milk's favorite tripe.com. This looks different than what I'm used to. Yeah, normally it's like gray. Right. Maybe this is like, maybe who knows what I've been eating in China. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Ooh, that's crunchy. Mm. It's good. You know, usually when you eat tripe and stuff in China, yeah. you can pinpoint exactly what animal it is. Yeah. Because it's like, that's definitely what they eat. You can tell, right? I would want to dip it into something for you. It has absolutely no animal flavor or no barnyard flavor. It's which the makes texture it that gets me. I gotcha. Well, slather yeah. it in peanut butter. I'll make anything taste good. Yeah, let's see. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Let's just give it a shot. It's not that bad. Come on. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's awful, awful. I get it. I get mm. it. I get what you did there. Okay, look, I gotta just be br brutally honest here. Authenticity, mm -hmm. when it comes to that, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna give it a ten. You get that. <laughs> you get that in in China in a hot it pot. It tastes a little better, actually. Taste rating <laughs> out of ten, I'm gonna give it a zero. Just because you don't like it. Absolutely. However, yes. yes. Everything perfect. is perfect. Thank, thank you, you so much. I so, personally like it. We're not rating each one. Okay, of these maybe dishes. maybe a one. Okay. But that That's one food. comes from the sauce, not from the actual <laughs> thing. You know. One from the peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lamb, though, uh, I, we haven't given that a rating yet. You know, the lamb and the beef, both. I I would say authenticity. <coughs> you okay? But you can't eat it. See? Yeah. I call I call absolute nonsense on this. Uh, he likes awful thing. Choked up chili. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, he choked out a chili. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> I almost died there, guys. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay. You know, I have to be brutally honest, you know, and it's just kind of a real realization I've made now. I don't like hot pot as much as I thought. <laughs> 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 so I'm serious. I, think I, mean, I no. think I totally understand what you're talking I, about. It's more the experience, right? Yes, yes. Mm. It's not about the food as much as it is the experience, because I, I promise oh, you, <laughs> Sorry. every time I've had hot pot, in China, it's always been a bunch of friends. You know, you're out. It's cold outside. Right. You you're drinking beer. You're right, having a good right. time. Everyone's just ordering because it's usually cheap and cheerful. Right, right. Unless you go to a really fancy sure, one, sure, sure, sure. You can get away with just ordering plate after of plate course. of meat, and you know it's good. And you know, it's really nice to have at home as well. Yeah, I agree. Every every single supermarket's got a little like a little section that sells meatballs and, and the, the, and the sauce shape. that or the yeah. stuff you make the broth out of yeah right? like the chaffe on broth right, right. or whatever you know all that kind of stuff right. so you can go in there you can get all your ingredients right go home all you need is a hot plate right um either electric, yeah. yeah electric hot plate or your little gas one i got right. one of those yeah and you set it up on your dining room table and you just kind of have chomp away hot pot. hot pot yeah it's awesome yeah. So, yeah, so I'm going to so. say total for <laughs> authenticity of this place as we eat the rest of these vegetables and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say 7 out of 10, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're comparing to stuff we've had in China. And for taste, I'm going to go for a 6 because I think hot pot is tends to be overrated. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things that's a bit of a novelty when you get to China, but eventually I got sick of it, and I'm, I actually am still kind of sick of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, well, look. I don't want to be a positive poly or a negative no, no, Nancy. No, no, absolutely. I'd say if you happen to be in California in this area Definitely you, should, check it you out. should check this particular restaurant out it's fantastic right like if if yeah. you knock me out in China and you brought me here and you woke me up I think I'd st I was still in China sure. honestly the only thing that would throw me off are the square tables right and you know the freebie foods because free yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's sure. not, not normal um, and of course the top quality ingredients yeah you know cool but it's pretty damn awesome so what do you say we finish up here and uh, get back on the road let's do that Got a, a, a lot more places to go, a lot more Chinese food to see. But yeah, you can get good hot pot in America. You can. I'm kind of surprised. Me too. Mm. Got the hot pot out of our system, that's for sure. The hot pot's still in my system, and I don't know how it's uh, how it's going to exit my system. That was really <laughs> spicy. Yeah, it was nice though, and I'm feeling really warm. You know, I said it, it's a good winter food. It really is. It kind of warms you up. Sure. 
So I think you nice. kind of big dub how cold it was because I feel like it's only 65 degrees. It's not actually that cold out. Yeah, well, you know well, how it you is. Know. <laughs> Brr, that was nice. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, it was packed though and like yeah. more and more people kept coming in as we were leaving. So it's really popular and that just shows you just how good it is because if right. it's chock full of Chinese people and they are, we bumped into some subscribers just yeah, now leaving, cool, yeah. which is awesome. They're from China. Right. They watch our stuff. Right. And if they're saying this is a good place and they're coming here, right. then you know it's authentic. Looks like we ran into the right spot. Yeah, we certainly did. Now, that was a far cry from a lamb fetus inside of a hot pot. Yeah, I got I, I to gotta tell that story. Go you know, ahead. Like I said, when I first got to China, I was really disappointed with a lot of the food because, you know, every time you go out, they're giving you some horrible thing which you know like pig's blood tofu or whatever you know pig's especially in and... in Guangdong yeah. because Guangdong I mean people in Beijing will have a different experience or Shanghai it's it's way more foreigner friendly but Guangdong is not foreign friendly no okay no. so anyway um, so I used to love to go to these hot pot places and there was a new one well not new but one I hadn't tried and so I got everyone everyone together you know my friends and we went there we were drinking beer and having a great time and just, you know, the usual thing like meatballs and, you know, throwing in the beef and the lamb. And I asked them to recommend something and they were like, yeah, this is our tersu, which means our specialty. Right. And I was like, what is it? And they said, it's yang roll, yang roll lighter, you know, which just means it's, it's lamb. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. So we're carrying on eating and then the waitress came and she had this plate of, it was like literally disgusting. It looked like afterbirth. It Probably literally was. looked like, uh, like afterbirth. And she just like threw it into the pot. And I was like, okay, and we keep eating, we keep eating. And then my friend, one of my friends, was suddenly incredibly shocked because what he pulled out is he pulled out a, a mini lamb, like a lamb fetus. And it was like the skull with the skeleton and bits of meat and stuff and everything. He lifted it out and I was like, what the hell is that? And what they've done is they've basically given us their specialty is lamb fetus. So I guess when they slaughter the lambs that are pregnant, you know, then they get the lamb fetuses and they store them or whatever. And then that's what they like to put in their hot pot. So you got to be careful. You can't just willy-nilly order anything off the menu. On that note, <laughs> we'll see you at the next restaurant. <laughs>
And sometimes, you know, every restaurant can be different, obviously. You can put all kinds of stuff. But it's like a little, almost like a tiny little taco. Yeah, yeah, with, it's uh, kind of interesting. duck skin in it. It's really delicious, actually. It is. You put you put some cucumbers and onions yeah. and, you know, they, they have those kind of different things you can add. So it's actually very nice. But, you know, we had Peking duck in Beijing that yeah. time. Remember we sure. went there and we had it? And I'll be honest, it wasn't the best Peking duck I'd it ever had. It was pretty had. good. It was, pretty it was good. good, but I, I've actually had better in other parts of China. Right. Because of course, you can get it everywhere in China. Sure. It's a very famous dish, right? Um, I'm just curious as to how the Peking duck here in America tastes. Never had it in America before, yeah. and I have to say, the scary thing about Peking duck is it can be done really poorly. Yeah. Uh, because it's such a labor-intensive dish, it tends to be pretty pricey. Yeah. If you go to like any place that's not really expensive, I have a feeling it's not very good. I've had bad Beijing duck before. Okay. It's not It's not great. It can be sure. soggy. It's not crispy, you know. Long story short, we're in the outskirts of LA and yeah. beautiful snowy mountains. Yeah. Beautiful day out today. Yeah, it's interesting. And uh, we're going to head to this place called Beijing Tasty House, where we're not only going to get Beijing duck, but Beijing food in general. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'm not super familiar with Beijing food other than the times that we've been to Beijing and tried it out. It's not something yeah. I eat very often. Sure, but sure. It'll be cool to compare. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very curious to see what they have on offer. And I really do like, you know, Peking duck a lot. So... Let's give it a try. Hopefully it lives up to, you know, the authenticity of the mainland. Uh, welcome to Beijing Tasty House. 我们这边呢以北方菜为主焖卤烤鸭相对来说烤鸭的油性会大一些 you ready? I am. I mean, it looks good. It is a little bit different than what we had in Beijing in that it wasn't, that was just the skin. Right? Yes. It looks like they've hidden a little bit of meat under this for us, yeah. which is great for you. Before fan. before we begin, I gotta say there are a couple of interesting things about this restaurant. Number right. one, I notice you can pay by WeChat. Right, which is weird in America. Yeah, it's really weird. No one uses it. No, no. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. And also, maybe you can explain what's on this placemat over here. Um, this was a little bit weird. Usually, when you go to like a diner or something in America, maybe they have like Jim's towing repairs or a vacuum cleaner company. This is Forest Conceptions, where you can be compensated for donating your own eggs from your ovaries. Yeah, twenty thousand dollars. Not a bad, uh, bad, not a bad donation. You can buy a car with that. Mm. Then you have your own kid running around. Yeah, it's not really yours anymore. So look, traditionally, what we usually do with this is. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is the way this has been displayed. Yeah, the duck's kind of looking at its own flesh being eaten. It's like offering itself to us. That's it nice. That's nice. Okay. It look, anyway, it looks nice. Yeah. The usual, the usual way you eat this is you take this pancake type yeah. thing over here. Looks uh, good. Put some of that sauce, which is usually plum sauce or something along those lines. Or hoisin sauce. Yeah, yeah. hoisin sauce. This yeah. looks like hoisin. It looks very Probably. savory. Yeah. And then you put some of the cucumbers, you put some of the sort of whatever sliced up onions, onions spring onions, yeah. or probably spring onions. Yep. Looks like it. And then you put some of the Leaks. skin. Uh huh. And that's usually what you do. Oh. In this one, like I said, you're going to have some meat with yours, which you're going to really appreciate, I think. Yeah, because. Yeah, there we go. I mean, it is, it is skin. I'm gonna right. put a little, a little meat on mine as well. Yeah. I wonder if they've done this just for the Western taste, because yeah, you can see this is actually just skin. There's no, no meat attached to this. The thing skin. is, though, speaking to, uh, speaking to one of the managers. Yeah. He said that there's never any white people that come in here, or Westerners, he said, right? Yeah. Which that's, I thought was kind of weird. That's true, you're actually right. So yeah, maybe it's not for Western taste. Yeah. See, yeah, this is what I would say is a pancake, not like IHOP. Oh, okay. You know, I this is you. what, like, this kind of thin stuff. Right. I think uh, IHOP's like flat. We definitely didn't go to IHOP. We certainly did. <laughs> we certainly did. His favorite restaurant. No. <laughs> I'm not good. Yeah. I'll let you have that one. Yeah, um, okay. okay, so put some of your veggies yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of this, a little bit of this. It smells exactly like a Beijing duck pancake that I've had anywhere else, so that's good. You know what's quite cool is, um, 
sometimes in the night markets, mm -hmm. they'll kind of wrap these mini, you know, just exactly like yeah, this. So it makes yeah. it a mini ones you can it's, buy a whole bunch. And you don't have to uh, do it yourself. Yeah. I like making it myself though. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I like a lot of onions on my. Let's try it out. Let's do it. I'm a fan of this pancake. Mm -hmm. It's a little chewy. Mm. And the skin mm -hmm. isn't too skin like avian, almost poultry. It doesn't have that poultry flavor, which is nice. And I have a feeling that has to do with the kind of birds they use. Mm -hmm. The sauce is super, super strong. I wouldn't use as much. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go too liberal with the sauce. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Onions are good, cukes are good. And I think they use these because the duck is really greasy. Like even the meat, it's super greasy, fatty meat. Mm -hmm. This stuff kind of cuts through all that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Gives a little freshness to it. Otherwise it'd be a, a little you. much, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Other courses of our duck has arrived. Yeah. Just yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try a piece of skim. Um, I'm just gonna try the meat. With the meat. Mm. It's good duck. That's right. I can appreciate that. Yeah, it's good duck. That's better than what I had in Beijing. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. It's also, also cheaper. Yeah. Remember that one Beijing place? Mm, yeah, super expensive. It's like eighty dollars. That's because it's a, it's a tourist thing, right? So mm, when you good. go to Beijing, you've got these setups sort of Beijing Kaya, famous right. restaurants, and they're incredibly expensive. You can sort of just go down the road and get it much cheaper if you know where to go. You but, can. Yeah. Sure. But I like this better. Mm, me too. That's great. So for this? Yeah. Authenticity, I'm gonna agree with you. I've seen pancakes like this, but these are they taste, stickier. Yeah, they taste very different to what we're used to. It's almost like a pastry, yeah. in a way. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. So, authenticity, it's weird for me. What would you give it? Um, because normal Beijing duck is carved on the side of the table. Yes. And then also, you usually just get the meat. And maybe they make a dish with the other stuff later yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. But you never really see that. Because this is put together with the meat, almost in a more Cantonese style, yeah. I would say, and and paired with this kind of pastry like pancake, yeah. I would say I would give the authenticity like a seven out of ten and compared to like Chen Juda or one of the big kind of chains up in Beijing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and for me, the taste, I would give a 8.5. It's really, really, really good. I'm gonna go for like five. Okay. Although the taste of it is very authentic. Right, right. So the taste is really up there and around about seven, like you say, for the taste. Right. But as far as being tasty is concerned, yeah, I, I really good. like it. It's great. Um, I'll get six. Six and a half, maybe. Because you know, you're not a skim boy. Yeah, it's not my... Duck's not my favorite meat either. I like that they have an option for you, though. Mm -hmm. You know, for people that don't like skim, I think a lot of people don't like skim. Some people love it, like me, right? Very, very good stuff. Can recommend this, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can say that I was a little bit worried that this was going to be completely inauthentic, but everyone around in this restaurant is Chinese. They yeah. told us that we are the only Westerners that have come in here, yeah. which I find kind of weird. But, but you, don't need, you don't need to feel intimida intimidated though if you are in the area because mm. the manager speaks English. Mm. They do have English on the menus. And uh, I'd, like to, yeah, I'd like to reiterate, you want real authentic Beijing duck? This is probably about as good as you're going to get. In fact, I'm going to say it's better than the Beijing duck you've had in Beijing. I'm, it's, almost <coughs> it's almost a little too weird what's happening to us <laughs> yeah. is that we keep consistently finding that some of this food is more authentic or more delicious than what we've had in China yeah which I find a little bizarre I'm finding it very bizarre too. but it's not a bad thing and I the thing is I don't think it's just our Western palates I'm pretty sure the Chinese people would agree with it because mm. it's really good and you've got Chinese people all around us eating it and if it wasn't good they wouldn't be here no I mean yeah. talk about discriminating taste Chinese mm. people are incredibly picky with their Chinese food mm. Mm. If that makes any sense well, I must say, it's pretty awesome to know you can get like proper Beijing food here in LA. I'm kind of surprised. For sure. We've now tried China's most iconic dish in America. That's true. Yeah, it's awesome that you can get it here. Yeah, I know you're not a big fan of avian skin. No. But uh, you can appreciate the dish. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, you know, whenever I go out with uh, Sasha or even with you guys, like, and I get chicken or anything, I'm always like taking the skin off and giving it to other people because I can't handle it. Yeah, I usually eat all their skin. Yeah. Sounds, sounds terrible. really weird. Sounds awful. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> On that note. Yeah.
lovely weather we're experiencing today, Simo. It's not supposed to be like this in Newport Beach, California. You know when you see all like the uh, like TV shows that are filmed here and you hear about Newport Beach, you know, it's where all the celebs live and they don't want to live in the hustle and bustle of LA and Hollywood and stuff. And yeah. we come here and it's not sunny like on all the TV shows. Yeah, it's uh, still nice though. I'm really liking it. Certainly has a different vibe <laughs> from uh, where we started, that's for sure. Absolutely. But uh, so, yeah, with all the all the Rolls Royces and nice cars around, basically all these jewelry shops, seems a little bit out of place for your average mom and pop Chinese restaurant. But that's apparently where we're going today. This guy Wing Lam, he Wing is Lam. The, yeah Wing Lam is the CEO of this really really big fish taco company, and he has uh, all <laughs> kinds. Hang of on a second, fish tacos. Fish tacos, Mexican style, right? The thing that's really special about him for us is not the fish tacos. Of course, like what does that have to do with it Chinese has food? Absolutely nothing. Okay, all right, Jim. And what we're gonna okay. do today is break all the rules of this entire series. Okay. And go find out who and why they invented Chinese American cuisine. So we're gonna see the grandfather, the granddaddy, the birthplace, and kind of the the forefathers of Chinese American food, the stuff that you find at every place in America. So you're talking about like sweet and sour shrimp prawn balls, walnut chicken, the beef with broccoli, General Tso's Tso 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 chicken. chicken, lo mein, chow oh. mein, right? Okay. Apparently this story goes way, way, way back. And Wing's father uh, and his relatives were the ones that came here and started this whole craze. And that's why in your little town in Alabama yeah. has Chinese American food. Okay, well, I mean, that sounds really interesting to me. I'm interested in their story. Yeah, so uh, I think we're, we're almost there. Yeah. Let's find a parking spot. Looks kind of difficult to park around here. Yeah, it does. So this is my mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Lee, and we're here at the famous Shanghai Pine Garden on Balbo Island, California. And my name is Wing. I'm their third son. 四六年就离开了扬州我们就到了上海到了上海一九五零年到了香港一九五一年到了日本在五五年到巴西一九六九年来美国我们在这个美国呢是在这个来刚刚来的时候呢就在好莱坞那个在一个restaurant丁好resta
we'll have some of that. Uh, the, the tofu noodles, uh, the mapo tofu is very popular. And I, I call it the Western version. You got the broccoli chicken, the orange chicken, uh, the kung pao shrimp. Uh, we got, obviously, you gotta have fried rice. You know, you know we like steamed okay. rice, but the American palate likes fried rice. Mm -hmm. I think people love things with soy sauce. Mm -hmm. So we have a variation of dishes that are both traditional and American westernized. I am so excited. I'm super excited <laughs> to be at the new Pine Shanghai restaurant. Yeah. Very, very fascinating story from the family here, actually. Yeah. Fascinating story all over the world to bring Chinese food to America. And I think a lot of people, I, mean, I should say every American is familiar with normal Ch Americanized Chinese food, right? Yeah. But the really special thing about this restaurant is they, ha they got both. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, changing certain dishes to suit American taste, very normal to do with a restaurant with mm -hmm. foreign food, right? But yeah. also maintaining a lot of the uh, original flavors that you would of Chinese food. Absolutely. So this is going to be a little bit of an off-the-wall review. <laughs> traditional Chinese Coke. Traditional Chinese Coke. We got <laughs> traditional Chinese sweet and sour pork. Yeah. We got the American. We got versions. the Chinese burrito. Chinese burrito, which is you know something I'm uh, <laughs> are really excited to try. Our friend Wing here is actually telling us this is this is the dish that made his father famous. Well, can we try it before we continue? It's mushu pork. We have to explain what it is. Well, okay. Can yeah. I take a bite? Because I'm scared. Go, go for it. All right. go for it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's super good. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's super good, but really just blowing my mind. I thought I was eating Mexican food until I taste the inside. Um, mm. Super sweet, a little bit smoky. It's almost got that breath of the dragon that you get from cooking in a wok. Mm. Mm. Very Chinese on the inside. I was really surprised because it kind of reminded me of a Beijing Kao Ya, because they use the wrap so? to put uh, all that yeah, kind of stuff Yeah, I suppose so. It. It's got maybe plum sauce or something in it, maybe. But it's, it's just the wrap that makes it so mm. different. Yeah, now I gotta, I've got to admit that uh, my taste when it comes to Chinese food is, this is my favorite kind of Chinese food. I know a lot of people are going to get down on me because <laughs> I've been living in China for 12 years, and of course I do love authentic Chinese food, and we've traveled, both of us, around the whole of China, and we've tried everything. Mm -hmm. But I still like westernized Chinese food the most, because it's got that you know, the Western palate in mind. And Get out of here. No, it's delicious. It's absolutely amazing. This is actually and fantastic. This, this, is, this is good, so I can I'm only, sorry, I gotta go. I, we recommend. got a lot of food to eat, but I gotta, mm -hmm. I gotta mm -hmm. keep going here. I mean, I feel like a lot of people get down on Americanized Chinese food because of the cheap nature of it. But if you go find the real deal, the good stuff like we have here, I think it's in a completely different realm of, or genre of food, to be honest. You know mm. what I mean? So I'm gonna have to say, uh, for the burrito, the authenticity, I'll give it a probably about a one out of ten. I think but we should just go for a zero because it's its own <laughs> thing. <laughs> but for taste, taste, I'm gonna give it a ten. I have to go Absolutely. with ten on that one. That kind Absolutely. of, I didn't. Ex I watched them make it, mm. and I was kind of like, okay, I kind of know what this is gonna taste like, but it completely mm. Just, mm. It exceeded my expectations for sure. I keep almost yeah. reaching for it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go with the sweet and sour pork because it's the brightest. Oh yeah, yeah. Now I see chunks of pineapple here. See so a little gulo bit of roll, right? Yeah, we would call it gulo roll, right? Yeah, in China. Yeah. Yeah. Gulo roll. Yeah. yeah. We, can, we can get this dish in China, actually. We can. But it looks um, a little different. It looks a little different. Yeah. Usually, when we find it, I find them in the like Hong Kong style canteens and stuff. Sure. You know, that's where, where I get them a lot. So. Sure. It smells a little bit sour, a little mm -hmm. bit sweet, kind of fruity, like pineapple. Yeah. You go for it. That's very sweet. <laughs> Ooh. That is super sweet. I would eat that for dessert. I imagine Americans would love that. I love it. <laughs> You're not even American, dude. <laughs> You're well, Western. You're Western. Very good stuff, very sweet. Mm. Almost pungent in a way. A little bit of vinegar in there. Mm. Yeah. Good stuff though. Nice and crispy on the outside. The good old roe is pretty much exactly like you'd get other than a little bit extra sweetness and a little bit extra sourness. Yeah. So I'm gonna say I can get something very similar in China. So if you were to compare eating that in China and eating that here, it's, it's got a good authenticity. It's right. all the way up there, so eight out of 10. Yeah, for sure, I, I'd know. match that. Yeah, As but the taste is a little better than what I usually get I in China. Say, so. I, I don't want to offend anyone out there, mm. but I mean, it's just the quality of ingredients that they would use in a restaurant like this is quite a bit higher than you get in China. No offense, subscribers, I'm so sorry, but this would be yeah. a little bit higher on the taste scale for me. This is a chow fun, and I know when me and you nice. have a little too much to drink, yeah. On the streets of uh, China, we'll go out real late at night. I'm talking midnight, 1 a.m. 
Yeah. And we'll be like, what is there? And you see these great big walks and these flames yeah. mm -hmm. at night, and you're like, you know what? That's the only thing I want right now. Yeah. yeah. We do this way too often. It's it's awesome. That place right near your house, we always yeah. go sit there. We call it crack noodles. And the because reason why we call it crack noodles is always coming back. <laughs> always coming back, yes. Yeah, so. And this reminds me of that. It yeah. kind of looks identical. <clears throat> Let's try it out. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know what? It is almost identical. I could if say you gave me a blind taste test. Yeah. The only way I could differentiate them is number one, if I was sober, which I am now, and number two, is the kind of soy sauce that they use is slightly different. Mm -hmm. Tastes equally as delicious. Absolutely yeah. amazing stuff. I could eat these all day and all night, okay. and I would be ten ten thousand pounds. Yeah. Authenticity from you. Ten out of ten. Mm. Me too. Absolutely, just like. Hundred percent. Ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Taste. taste? I gotta say nine. Yeah. I'm actually gonna, gonna go all the way up to ten on this one. I love yeah, this yeah. stuff. I absolutely, absolutely love it, too, yeah. for sure. Mm. Mm. I didn't know if you'd go, so now I feel a little embarrassed that I went, I went nine. That's all right. It's very Ooh. seldom I go all the way up to ten. You didn't Fair even enough. give the bowels a ten out of ten. Did oh, yeah, you didn't. No, oh, man, it's great. That's freaking delicious. Mm. That's freaking mm. delicious. Yeah, absolutely. Winston, I'm a little bit, mm. I'm a little bit worried about this episode for one specific reason. What's that? And that is everyone that watches our videos, everyone that watches anything we do with food, watch it because they want to see what authentic, real Chinese culture and food is like. Mm -hmm. And I was so worried coming into this that I was going to maybe prefer this. Mm -hmm. And I kind of do. <laughs> well, that's, <clears throat> that is why American Chinese food is the way it is. It's because it's adapted to the Western palate. You know, you come over here, you've got different ingredients to work with, you know, different kinds of vegetables, you know, the meat's different, it right. is different. You eat chicken in China, For you eat sure. chicken here, it's completely different. When, yeah. You know what I can say though, mm. is that it's kind of a wonderful marriage because yeah. yes, you get really low end American Chinese food at your typical takeout place. Maybe the people have never had a history you of like cooking. like Oriental Buffet. Yeah, like we saw in Tucson, <laughs> Arizona and stuff. Yeah. Maybe their family has no tradition of cooking, right? Yeah. But when maybe you have, they're not even Chinese. Maybe they're not even Chinese. Mm -hmm. When you have people that bring traditional dishes and kind of adjust them to local flavors, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, that's no. how fusion's born, right? Yeah. And in a way, this is kind of the oldest fusion food here yeah. in America. And it's kind of a beautiful thing. Absolutely. So, <laughs> absolutely love the food tonight. Right. Um, yeah, what else can we say? I can say that you should definitely come check this out because it might look like, from the sign, your average you know, Chinese restaurant is not. No. It's, it's average food that tastes way better than average, that's for sure. Yeah, so it's good come stuff. check it out if you're ever in Balboa Island. Yes, <laughs> very good. Awesome, well let's get stuck in and then I guess we gotta hit the road. Well, that was uh, completely different to what I expected. I expected it to be the most average Chinese American restaurant Spring you've ever rolls, had. Sweet Spring and rolls, sweet sour pork, and stuff. sweet and sour pork, your average stuff. And we did have average dishes there oh, for yeah. sure. Mm. Blow, I'm absolutely blown away. Me too. I'm absolutely blown away. That was freaking delicious. Yeah, I loved it. So far, one of my favorites. Absolutely one of my favorites. And again, I just don't want to piss anyone off with that, but gosh darn it, that was really <laughs> yummy. Yeah, it was. Those burritos, man. I know. I don't even want to eat Mexican food after that. <laughs> it's so That's good. That's a better way to do it. Oh yeah, I mean, it's literally, no Ch yeah, Chinese food in a burrito. Like, it's so weird. I've never thought of that. No. What's next, sushi in a burrito? I, that sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds like raw fish in a burrito. I'd, I'd try that. That's actually gonna make me throw up. I'm too <laughs> full right now. Anyway, yeah. to top it all off, we had a fortune cookie, which was a perfect end of that meal. Mm. What did yours say? Mine said that uh, keep your plan secret. Keep your plan secret? Yeah. That's terrifying, dude. <laughs> we work together. Yeah, it's okay. I always keep my real big plan secret anyway, so. What do you? <laughs> never mind. You'll never, never know. <laughs> dude, that actually legit, like off camera, that makes me legitimately nervous. Anyway, uh, mine said that I am sociable and entertaining. Uh, yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. Thank you. You should say that's definitely true. No, it's kind of true. You, yeah, most of the time. <laughs> you go in there and you meet this really genuine family with an absolutely amazing story. Yeah. With really cool characters. Wing was such a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad, really funny character. You could oh, yeah. you could recognize him anywhere. You know yeah, I mean? absolutely. Yeah. Really, awesome. really cool <laughs> stuff. So I was super happy and really lucky to meet these guys. Well, let's say we head off. We got a big day tomorrow. We sure do. And with that. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, we will.
Welcome to Ghost Stories with Sea Milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sea Milk looks like a ghost. That's because we've got some fairly poor lighting in the car at the moment. But guys, we're really looking forward to tonight. Yes, we are. First of all, we have a very special guest that's come to pick us up. Yes. And that is Mr. Jun Lee. Our gracious host is taking us to his restaurant and the reason why we're so excited is because it's kind of like a barbecue and beer restaurant. That's true. And I gotta say, this Tesla is a lot more comfortable than your Corvette. <laughs> yeah, okay, that is true. <laughs> I like but... throughout my back in your car. Mm. Anyway, yeah, super happy to go check out some Dombe food because you are in fact from Dombe, am I right? Uh, well, my part is from Dombe, gotcha. uh, Thieli. His mother actually told him that not to get involved in restaurant business. Whatever you do, don't get involved <laughs> in the restaurant business if you go to the United States. Okay. Right. And this is what he ended up doing. Okay, cool. <laughs> so he didn't listen to his mom. So yeah. mom. Sometimes mama doesn't know best. Yeah, but he, sh he should ting mama the hua. <laughs> ting mama the hua. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Awesome. So, uh, so basically, what are we going to eat tonight? What do you, what do you uh, uh, got on the menu? Well, there's a lot of uh, 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 Dong Bay style uh, small dish mm -hmm. and barbecue uh, stuff. Cool. So awesome. you can just... Uh, yeah. You take whatever you like. This awesome. Awesome. I mean, this is uh, probably, at least for me, my favorite food in China because yeah. it's the kind of thing you can drink beer and just eat barbecue and it's delicious. And usually you sit outside, you know, and you can sit outside in the summer. In fact, even in, where I live in winter as well, it's not that cold. I was so going to say, know. I mean, we've said this before, but it is definitely one of the most... Uh, how to say like expat friendly types of foods yeah and yeah we like all kinds of chinese food but this is just one of the things i always look forward to when i'm in china we really feel like we're in asia right now just <laughs> yeah. driving yeah. around here it's you can get cool. around <laughs> we like without it. speaking english at all yeah i know it's so weird in the supermarket you know they were speaking mandarin we had to, to us, speak chinese you know? it was crazy <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's you really, know, you, really interesting. <laughs> you flew all the way to America, <laughs> yeah. and now you're speaking Mandarin it's a lot. It's kind of crazy to see yeah. the big changes here. But anyway, it looks like we've arrived. Yes. Yeah. All it's right. on the second floor. Cool. Okay. Let's uh, so, go check it out. Yeah, yeah can't that, wait. First floor. So basically, we're focused barbecue and welcome. Basically, we're uh, serving skewers uh, and then the taste is uh, based on northern China and then a lot of uh, snacks from China too. Uh, also hop, uh, Chinese hot pot, it's hot and spicy and it's really famous around this area too. And that's about it. And then also we have beers, Ching Diao's. <laughs> Focus Winston, we got beer to drink. Absolutely, and guess what? It's my favorite beer, Qingdao, it as is, everybody knows. It's kind of bizarre. We haven't had it on this entire trip for filming all these episodes, right? Yeah, but it's not in a bag. No. So I'm a little disappointed, but you know, you can only get that in the real Qingdao. Right. A quick disclaimer here. This barbecue, from what we've seen thus far, looks fantastic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely amazing. The flavors and the smells that I got out of that kitchen were... Amazing. A cut above the rest. I'm just yeah. going to say that, right? But. What we've done is we started out with one of the riskiest dishes that they have because I feel like it took the less, least prep time. Sure. <laughs> what this is, is this is um, raw beef. One of their specialties, apparently. Now, I'll be honest with you, in China, I would never eat this. In America? I got no problem with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you put now, a little bit of vinegar on there, right? Yeah, we need to mix the vinegar with the wasabi. I have a feeling it has something to do with like disinfecting or gives it a little special <laughs> Thank taste. Thank you. Right? Yeah. But we've all had carpaccio before, right? Not so all of us. You've never had carpaccio? It's never really appealed to me. Okay, well, you're about I, to I have mean, Chinese carpaccio. I think I've had ostrich carpaccio. That's... Okay, you one up me there. Okay, this one is uh, ready to roll. What about you? I'm just going to quick dip. You're doing a quick dip? Yeah, you ready? Okay. Let's do it. One, two, three. Mm. It's actually pretty good. I like it. I do like it. One thing I'm super happy about, mm -hmm. and we've said this way too many times in our other videos, mm -hmm. is we're kind of tired of eating shuenyo. Yes. Like yes, water yes. buffalo. This is beef, which it's I'm so beef. happy to have. Absolutely. Finally. It's, it's really nice. Cool. Next, uh, we're going to have the cooked version. This is a cooked beef. And apparently, they, they use filet mignon. Filet mignon. This. So that's fantastic. We don't, do, we don't dip these. No, no, no. Just, just straight away. Mmm. Mmm. The flavors are very authentic. So yes. I'd, I'd have to give it a 10 out of 10. But. We never have real beef. I know. It actually blew my mind because it is exactly like the cumin spice that you get mm, on the side of the mm, road. Mm, mm. But the beef is real this time. So it's kind of playing tricks with my mind. Loving it. Loving it. The beef on the whole though, for me, mm -hmm. authenticity. I mean, I got to go like five out of 10 because like you I've never get, had really good real beef. beef. This yeah. is way yeah. better. Mm. 
As for the taste, I'm gonna go for a 8.5. That's delicious. Absolutely. Next it's up, awesome. we're gonna have the lamb skewers. Now, oftentimes you get in China, it's gonna be goat, right? Yeah. And they actually they actually don't make a distinction in Chinese. Yang rou is also lamb, and it's also goat, right? Well, I mean, they do have a. There is a distinction because a shanyang is a goat, and a mei me yang order right, is, but a, is a sheep. When people are talking about yeah, just yang lamb, rou, you, yeah. sometimes they don't know. Yeah. Right? yeah. But anyway, this is lamb, confirmed. And this, good shot. this is my favorite chuar. Mm. Mm. That's so good. <laughs> so hearty and wow. That's delicious. That is so much better than what I usually have mm. down from my house in Huizhou. Mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat there anymore. Same in Shenzhen. I mean, I've been to some fairly upscale, you know, sort of barbecue restaurants, if you can call it that. Mm. Um, the flavor is there, but this is so much nicer because the meat's so much nicer. I mean, the, the kind mm. of fat, there's a little bit of pocket of fat that they put mm. in between the skewers of meat, and you don't notice it. It's not mm. gristly or anything, mm. right? Mm. It kind of explodes in your mouth with juice and kind of oil, mm. and it's delicious. Lamb oil is really yummy, right? And what Lamb I got to say <laughs> is that this, for authenticity for me, is a 10 because it does taste like a, a young roe yes. choir, but yes. it's just better. It is better. So if we could, yeah, the authenticity would be a 10 for me as well because right. it is the same flavor, but... The taste is a 10 out of 10. I'm gonna go. 100%. I'm gonna go for that as well. I mean, if you're gonna come to a, a Chinese barbecue, you're definitely gonna eat Yang Rou Chua. Yeah. This is pretty much the epitome of that. You know, there's one thing that always disappoints me when we eat Yang Rou Chua usually is, you know, the fat that they use is usually more than the meat. Right. You know, and right. it's overpowering and it's gristly, like you said. Right. And I usually sit there and I'm pulling the meat bits off, eating the meat, and then like just discarding the fat bits onto like a side plate. Right. But not here. I mean, it just works so well. It's so. fantastic stuff. 10 out of 10. Mm. Uh, one thing I noticed about these little baby Qingdao's is that they're little baby Qingdao's. Mm, yeah. Never seen one so little. Because in China, we get uh, double-sized beers. Yeah, no, they're, they're huge. These must be like export only. This is apparently uh, <laughs> deep fried milk. OK. And uh, sea I, milk. Yeah. I actually don't know what to expect from this. So why don't you grab one? I'm gonna use my fingers. Yeah, why not? I'll grab one too. And, well, I mean, what could deep fried milk be? It's not really barbecue food, but it was highly recommended as a specialty, right? Yeah, so let's, so give, let's it give it a shot. This all looks so good. This is amazing. Mmm. Mmm. What the hell is this? It's like a oily custard. <laughs> it's nice. It's very good. I can dig it. It doesn't remind me of, maybe it's kind of milky. Mm. How do they make this? Just custard, man. It looks like it's fried custard. Almost. Fried custard. Fried custard. It's really good though. It is nice. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a massive fan, but it's nice. I'm going to give it like a five and a half out of ten for taste. I'll mirror Cause, that. Because, you know, it's a, it's a little bit oily. It's but okay. It's weird. It's I have like, a feeling I would like it more after the meal. Because I want to eat some more of this delicious barbecue. Absolutely. I keep trying to pick stuff, but I keep looking at these oysters, so if you don't mind. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. You have the oyster, and I'm, you're going to have to do, do it by yourself because I'm not a big fan of seafood. Okay. I mean, shellfish especially i'm allergic to shrimp right but so you don't take chances yeah right? but the thing is yeah we ate raw oysters on conquering northern china oh, i can have oysters okay. but i have a problem with oysters that are prepared in china and that is that they are more garlic than oyster this is very like, very garlicky too but it looks awesome these are super meaty and clean looking oh give it a shot certainly looks bigger than any oyster i've seen in china mm -hmm. good well lucky you because you get another one well, fine. <laughs> I think I'll go for it. Yeah, you should. That's amazing. It doesn't have that irony taste that I get from Chinese oysters. It's probably because it doesn't have uh, heavy metals Look in it. Look at that. It's huge. That's Super awesome. creamy and sweet. I love it. Amazing. Yeah. And they have this like, kind of like uh, little round uh, batch of noodles on the yes, top. Yes, yes. Yeah, rice noodles. Rice yeah. noodles. And it has a ton of uh, garlic on it. But it's really good smoky flavor. Uh, way better than raw, raw oysters, that's for sure. For sure. Mmm. You know, we have something else here. Sorry, right. I know you're still enjoying your oysters over there. Sorry, I, I can't draw it. Yet, okay? Yeah, you've got to give it a rating before we move yeah. on. So, what are your ratings? Authenticity is kind of like a seven because the Chinese oysters I've had Much are very small. This is a whole mouthful. So you couldn't eat like a dozen of those. Remember, remember on Conquering Northern China where we bought that like 200 <laughs> oysters for like five dollars or whatever it was. It was false advertising though because when you crack them open there's like this little bit of meat And in actually there. a lot of them were just kind of empty. Right. They were. They, haven't, they hadn't grown yet. Yeah, one, one of these is worth 20 of those. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to give a, uh, for a taste rating, I'm going to give that a nine. That's prob probably the best oyster I've ever had. Well, I like barbecue you know. stuff though. What do you know? Now this next one, 
I believe it's pork belly uh, mushrooms. You know those like see you tomorrow mushrooms. We call them in China. Do you, um, are you going to explain why? Well, let's just say that you will see them the next day. They don't digest easily. No, they don't digest very well. Um, see you tomorrow mushrooms in pork belly. And it okay. uh, looks good. Let's give it a try. It's almost like a piece of bacon. You know what it looks like? It looks like a chrysalis, you know, like a, <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's hope a meat butterfly doesn't come out of this. <laughs> yeah, let's give it a shot. This is good with the pork belly on the outside. I'd say it's kind of like a sweet bacon mm -hmm. wrapped around up. Very yummy though. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan, big fan. Authenticity, I've had that before. Absolutely. It's a nine. Yeah, it's definitely, I, I'm going to give it a nine and a half. 10. Uh, for taste, I'm going to go with a 7. It's a bit sweet for me. Mm. But I like yeah, it. Yeah, I've never really liked those mushrooms, to be honest. Really? Yeah, 6.5 for me on taste. I think they're a bit overrated. That over there is the This lung is mian. the lung mian. So yeah, this the is lung barbecued mian. cold noodles, which is a complete uh, oxymoron. Yeah, let's way. give it a shot. I'm really, yeah. really, really curious. <laughs> I lost so my hot dog. I lost my dog. I'm losing everything. I'm a dog loser, this. dude. Okay, there we go. Oh, whatever. Shoot. <laughs> okay. Let's just try. Ready? Mm. Mmm, mmm, that's like syrupy almost. That's really good. Mm. That tastes better than normal lung mian. Oh yeah. No, I mean, who knew that cold noodles would taste better hot? <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, I mean, that, mm. that's awesome. Amazing stuff. Mm. For authenticity, mm. it's almost like a three because I've never had that. That's special, it's super mm. special. It taste? Gonna go 8.5. Absolutely amazing mm. stuff. Loving it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it a nine. Mm. Authenticity again. I can't rate it because I've never had it before. I mean, it obviously exists, but you know, we've been to tons of uh, northern style barbecue places. I've never seen anything like that. Nearby. I mean, it's just kind of these really, really uh, thick noodles wrapped mm. around um, hot dogs and you have cilantro. Your cilantro, all the kind of innards that you'd get in the jambing. But so, cilantro is coriander, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Coriander, yeah. And some chives and stuff, but this slathered in this really, really nice uh, sweet, sweet sauce. Sweet, like almost like a honey syrup. I syrupy. usually don't like sweet stuff, but it was really good. That's great. Really good. See, Milk, I know you, you like weird food, right? You're always talking about, oh, I love the organs of this and that and the next thing. So that's why I ordered you very special over here, some prairie oysters, also known as sheep testicles. Listen, uh, listen, listen. I like weird stuff in that you think tongue is weird. You think liver is weird. It's stuff I grew up eating, right? I never do eat. think eating tongue and liver is weird. It's well, you know normal. what I find weird? Eating balls, because I didn't do that. <laughs> Mom didn't say, here's a fresh plate of balls for you. Yeah, but she may not have said, here's a fl fresh plate of balls, but it's right up your alley. You so. know what is kind of funny? What? It's not a whole big difference. Between <laughs> the egg and You the can trick someone, put like one of these on there. This is a sheep's balls. That's a huge. Oh my lord almighty. And there's something weird about eating balls because for me, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Yes, there is something weird about eating balls. No, I don't me, eat balls, so I don't really know. For Explain. me, I can, I can almost imagine yeah. when you're eating like a, let, think about it, like a chicken wing, you don't think about eating the wing of an actual chicken. When you're eating a lamb leg, you're not thinking, oh, this was like a walking leg in a lamb. But for some reason as a man, eating balls, <laughs> Just imagine it feels the, like these swinging down and you just walk up and you just bit them like an <laughs> udder, you know? I, well, I don't know about that, but yeah. But yeah. you just, you feel their pain. Yes. You know what I mean? And these are now sliced up. Are you ready? Sliced balls, yeah. Are I guess ready? we gotta have one each, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Everything's been amazing and I didn't want to end with this. Yeah. This. Do we have to eat a whole one? I think we, oh, a small one. I don't have a small one you on You do here. right there. What, this one? Oh, yeah, you're bragging about your big balls. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready? After this bloody You can trip. buy half of this one. Yeah, okay, I'll, okay. Have that. I'll, I'll eat this small one. Okay. So ready? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. I'm having a hard time. It's just the, the texture, it's soft and it almost has a fishy taste to it, doesn't it? Have a I love it, my God! <laughs> Don't talk about it! Why do you Can I have some there? of your beer, man? I'm out, I'm out. Can I have a little bit more of that, please? <gasps> it's almost like a bready, soft fish. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's <laughs> That's awful. Oh, everything was amazing. That was scary.
Mm. That was a taste I have never had before. Me neither. Like a bready, fishy, soft. Anyway. I'm, know, not gonna, I'm not going to rate that. I'm going to have to rate it because for authenticity, I guess it tastes like balls if you've ever had it. So I, but I've never had balls, so I can't <laughs> give it. <laughs> uh, a taste, I'm going to get a zero. That, don't eat that. Yeah, don't, don't order that. You know what I can recommend? What? This restaurant. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. 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 It was a really good experience and really friendly people here and just such a nice environment. So if you get a chance, definitely check it out. Focus Absolutely. Barbecue. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Uh, you know, I hope tomorrow's restaurant's going to be awesome because they're really going to have to try hard to up this one. You know what I mean? I fully agree. Yeah. Yeah, we got to do it. So, guys, we're on ludicrous mode. We're going to ramp up this sode in yeah. ludicrous mode. I don't have a seatbelt on. <laughs> I'm holding you, both of your seats. You, you better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you better hold. Oh, this yeah. light's going to go flying. Yeah, well, hold it, ghost boy. I'm going <laughs> to hold it. I guess it'll pin me back in my seat. Yeah. So it's it definitely not... will, so. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, that was really fantastic, Seamilk. What did you think of the meal? I thought it was absolutely delicious in so many aspects. It was like a throwback to China. Mm -hmm. It was like uh, kind of everything I love about Chinese barbecue, to be honest, kind of wrapped up into one clean and delicious package. And you know, the best part is you don't need to worry about a dodgy stomach, uh, you know? Dodgy stomachs come with Chinese barbecue. It's almost like it's, yeah. it's ubiquitous, right? Yeah, everybody who goes for Chinese barbecue, except me, anyway, the people I take, always end up having food poisoning the next day. Because, you know, yeah. you, depending you, on where you go. Yeah, yeah, you go out, you have a great night, lots of beer, lots of barbecue, and then, uh, yeah, you get those rumbles the next day, but not this time. The rumbles turn into something much worse. <laughs> yeah. And I have a feeling we're going to have a, a little bit of a rumble here well, without the rumble of an engine. Yeah, and uh, There's he's no rumble of an engine. A bit of a straight here. And uh, ludicrous mode. Kai Shi. Right now. Ah! <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's freaking fast. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and with awesome. that, <laughs> yeah, we oh. really want to say thank you very much to Jun Lee for this awesome experience and uh -huh. his awesome Tesla and his awesome restaurant. Yeah. And we yeah. will see you on the next episode. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, man. We appreciate it. It's been so nice oh, meeting you. So we have to say goodbye to LA. We've been driving all day. Where are we headed? We're headed to San Francisco. So we're headed to San Francisco. What is it that we're going to do there? Of course, we're going to go see San Francisco because it's a freaking awesome city. But also, we're going to go eat the, of course, what we're doing on this trip, authentic Chinese food, this time in America's biggest Chinatown. Yeah, I mean, look, last time I went through San Francisco, I didn't get a chance to really explore Chinatown. Yeah. So I'm actually really looking forward to it. Sure. I got you a little treat, by the way. Oh, what's that? I got I got you ostrich jerky and also <laughs> alligator jerky. Well, I've had ostrich before, you know. Should you start with the alligator, though? Yeah, yeah. I mean, ost ostrich is something you eat in South Africa a lot. Just... I've had it in Taiwan. Some alligator jerky. Not very good. It's not fishy. I wouldn't say it's fishy. It's just... It's, um... it's a little bit fishy. Yeah. A little dry, really. Is it, is it just me or is it just dry? It tastes like meat wood. Mmm. Which do you prefer? The taste is better on this one. I guess this brand sucks. Okay, alright. <laughs> Whoever made Buffalo Bob, you suck, boy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Buffalo Bob, but I do prefer your ostrich jerky over your alligator one. Anyway, so we're just basically on the road all day today. We're not going to be doing anything today. We're going to arrive in San Francisco. We're going to check into our hotel and then we're going to start exploring the next day we're going to go check out Chinatown see what it's all about and and uh, then try and arrange to go and see some awesome restaurants things like that so I we'll got, some, see you I got some awesome stuff playing for us don't oh, worry cool
actually in a very interesting place. Where are we, Sea Milk? We are in Chinatown. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. <laughs> yes, we are, and it's quite confusing because it literally looks like we're in China a lot of the time here. I would say it actually looks like identical to Hong Kong because of all the colonial buildings with the Chinese characters everywhere. Not to mention, it's really loud screeching, but uh, also the predominant language that I keep hearing around the streets is Cantonese. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, it's so nice to meet you. Keep in touch. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Bye. No, the thing is, when you get to a place like America, you know, I, I absolutely love it because there's so much opportunity here. Right. You see people of all different walks of life working together, living together. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got so much choice. You know, there's right. such a diverse landscape. Everything here is really quite spectacular. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, you might think I'm honeymoon parading it here, but it's not. Well, anyway, I'm hungry. Apparently dim sum on the street is a thing here. So we've been told about the best one in San Francisco, so let's go check it out. We are in San Francisco. I can't see anything. Put your glasses back on then, dude. Lost my contacts last night, it really sucks. Absolutely. What happened to the weather, Winston? Well, uh, it kind of just got all misty and overcast all of a sudden. It was quite nice and bright earlier on. Yeah, I kind of fell in love with San Francisco. We were walking around shooting, saw Alcatraz, we saw the beautiful kind of houses on the hill. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of steep walks everywhere, though. I They're absolutely love it, though. It's so cool. And uh, Chinatown here was quite spectacular. It, it's weird. It's literally like you're walking around Hong Kong. It is. There's very, very few differences. Yeah. One thing I will say, though, is that the people that came from China yeah. and came to this Chinatown are very different than the ones that we saw in L.A. Yeah, that's the thing. Everyone speaking Cantonese around here, and up until this point, we've been able to speak to everyone in Mandarin. Mm -hmm. But over here, literally, you try to speak Mandarin to them, they don't understand you because, yeah, they're right. all Cantonese. For sure. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Uh, this is not correct. It, it is. is currently now 10 past 2. 10 past 2. We're, we're in the middle of shooting right yeah. now. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Three, Get two, two, one. Now the difference is everybody that we met so far over here speaks Cantonese, mm -hmm. and it's something different because up until now on the trip, everybody's been able to understand Mandarin. We've been meeting people from the north of China, from central China, from all over China, but predominantly the people that have settled here in San Francisco obviously are from Hong Kong or from Guangdong because it's all Cantonese. There's been a massive disadvantage for us. Yeah. Now, let me tell you why. And this is some behind-the-scenes stuff, but. Yeah. Basically, everywhere we've gone in LA, it was pretty smooth sailing because I would call them up or I'd show up, mm -hmm. right? We'd just kind of randomly show up and speak Chinese to them, and it was kind of really nice. Like, they felt yeah. like a nice connection with us. But because everyone here is Cantonese, there's a different uh, barrier for us. Unlike yeah. in China, Cantonese people here don't speak Mandarin yes. for the most part, right? So yeah. they don't identify with that, and there's no camaraderie there. And also, you have to understand, you know, traditionally anyway, down south, there's a lot more scamming going on. There's right. a lot more sort of people taking advantage of people for money and things so they don't trust us. Right. It's very annoying because we'd walk into a restaurant in LA and we'd speak in Mandarin and say, hey, is your, is your manager here? Yeah, and they'd no be problem, like, whoa, let's do this, weird, you know? foreigners speaking Chinese. And then, here it's yeah. left and right, turn yeah, down over Yeah, we'd say, hey, is there a manager here? Like, no. We're like, we want to make a video. No. no. It's like, <laughs> so that's annoying. why we're in a park. And yeah. we're in a beautiful park, actually. It's yeah. quite nice here. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, other than the weather. And we got, Dim sum. apparently, the best dim sum you can buy in San Francisco. I have to have a bit of a laugh at the name because we always make that joke about Mong Kok because, you know... It's called Good Mong Kok Bakery. Yeah, Good Mong Kok Bakery. You know, in Hong Kong, you stayed in Mong Kok for a little while yeah. and, yeah. you know, I go to Mong Kok quite often to, to buy stuff, but, it, you know, it really does like sound like an STI, doesn't it? It really does. It really <laughs> does. <laughs> anyway, anyway yeah, let's uh, we've it. heard very good things about this. And you don't have to, we couldn't film inside because, well, we filmed us ordering, but there's no sit-down tables. Mm. So we had to get it to go. It's a, it's yeah. a go place. I mean, that's, that's something I've got to point out as well, is there's this huge queue outside. Uh -huh. And we've been walking up and down Chinatown, taking B-roll all day. Right. Right? And we get to that place, and guess what? There's still a queue. Right. And that's when you know it's good. And I've talked about this before. We talked about this on ADB yeah. China before, right? Right. It's basically... If there's a queue, that's where people will go because then obviously it's got to be good. Otherwise, why would people be queuing up? Right? For sure. And one of the Ooh. one of the reasons for the queue is your favorite thing in the world. Absolutely. Why don't you show that to the camera? Real I will. Quick? Okay. This is a chow shu bao, which is like a sweet barbecue pork bun. Right. And uh, basically, what you'll find inside of it is you'll find kind of a honey, honeyed, sweetened barbecue pork. Right. And it's pretty. Some of them damn can delicious. have some of them can have a bunch of different spices, almost like a nutmeg type flavor, and some That's of them true. are just straight up pork. Yeah. This one looks really good, wow. almost like a pulled pork. That looks That's better than in China. It does. I got to give it a try. Okay. Hmm. So 
to try it out. It does have a savory taste to it mm -hmm. and sweet and it's got a very fluffy sort of a, a, a breading around it. Well, not breading, a fluffy bun mm. around it. It's delicious. You know what I like about this one? What? It's not cloyingly sweet. Like yes, a yes. It's got a little bit more savory in it. Mm. And the, you know what the pork tastes like? You know when you've got like Chinese American food and it has the little bits of pork in the noodles? Mm. Like, mm. or the fried rice? It's like that same consistency of pork, but it actually works. Mm. It is very, very uh, gooey and kind of nice. One thing I hate about getting cha cha bao in China sometimes is they'll put like a little dab of sauce in there, and barely has anything. Mm. This one's chock full. Yeah, it's very generous. It's and not it's, very authentic in that way. Mm, I mean, you say that, but I've had very similar stuff mm. to this because dim sum is one of those things we've both probably had it up to here with, to be honest, because living in Guangdong, and our families being, you know, Chinese families of Guangdong, right? Every time you go out, you go out for yam cha, which mm. is just going out for dim sum. And for me, one thing I hate about dim sum in Guangdong is that pretty much every dish has got shrimp in it. Mm. Almost every dish, because they use shrimp paste, so there's like a little the shafen, and they throw them in everything, and it's really annoying because I'm allergic. So I'm always stuck at the at the dim sum places ordering cha cha bao, right. meatballs, and spring rolls, a couple of things like that, right? Right. And so I'm always having the same four or five dishes every time. So I've eaten a lot of these. I have too. I would say for authenticity mm -hmm. for me, that's a six out of 10. For taste, I'm gonna give that a eight. Okay. I'm gonna say it's an eight out of 10 for authenticity because I've had something that's almost exactly the same before. You d you're a big yeah. fan of this. You've had yeah. it more than me. Yeah, I have. For taste, though, I'll give it a I'll give it an eight as well. It's delicious. It's great. It's, good. it's a good yeah. cha bao. I think it's mm. better than most of the ones I've had. If you're going to have dim sum, you have to order the cha bao. For sure. What's next? Well. Like we were saying earlier, or I was saying, there's a lot of shrimp involved, right? So well, that's why you're going to take care of the chicken shao mai that we okay. got. And I'm going to take care of the shrimp dumplings. Absolutely. So, so let's see. Should, I've never seen, I've never ever seen a chicken shao mai before. This is the first time. Yeah, so it's going to take out points for authenticity immediately there. Yeah, usually they've got pork or they've got um, shrimp. It's always got like a, one little damn shrimp. Can I try one? Yeah, of course. Okay, cool. Yeah. So a shamai is basically a wonton wrapper wrapped around a dumpling sort of thing. This one's yeah. got scallions and chicken yeah, in it, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So this should be quite tasty, I think. Let's try it out. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It takes me back immediately to that roadside place next to my house in Huizhou. Mm -hmm. Oh, those? We, before yeah. we go work on our motorcycles or go on a trip or whatever, we'd stop and st stock up on something very similar. This something tastes similar. better, though. This still must taste like canned chicken soup in a way. Doesn't it? It's got yeah. a bit of chicken soup, you know, with mushrooms, you know, that kind of thing? Absolutely. This tastes like, almost like something you could get in any Chinese American restaurant. Yeah, yeah. And for that, the authenticity is three. I'm gonna give it a two, I'm maybe even a one, because mm. I've never seen a chicken shell mai. It's definitely made for the American for taste. Sure. And you can try and say, oh, but they maybe they have it somewhere in China. No, because this food comes from where I live in China, and right. I've eaten it like, religiously for years and right. years and years and years. I've That's never seen one. In fact, I'm going to give it a zero. Mm, I'm, I, the oh, reason okay, I no, give it a, a one because it's got the skin. Yeah, I was going to say, it okay. looks like a shamai. Yeah, it looks right? like a shamai, yeah. And uh, there's definitely a little bit of shrimp in there because I can feel a little tingle. I forgot to give it taste. Oh, yeah. Taste. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm going to give it a so, four. I actually quite liked it, so I'm going to give it like a six. Okay. Yeah. This looks exactly like a shrimp dumpling, albeit three times bigger. It is way bigger, yeah. And shrimp dumplings are just that. It's a rice paper dumpling, unlike, or a rice dumpling, unlike a wheat. Uh, dumpling wrapper. Yeah. A little bit translucent and it's chock full of shrimp usually. Give it a shot. What they've done. Oh, it's got a breaded shrimp inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. With an egg bread. Yeah. Like an egg breading. I've never seen that before. You get a lot more bang for your buck with these ones. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more shrimp in them, but I've had better ones. Mm -hmm. And I actually had better ones in New York City, believe it or not. Oh, at a dim sum place. And it had a whole shrimp in it. It was unadulterated. An unadulterated shrimp. So this did one, it have like its scales not, and stuff? This one's not fresh. No, okay. I'm saying this is not a fresh shrimp. It's like yeah, it's you probably yeah. frozen, mm. fried up. Um, yeah. Authenticity, I'm gonna give this a four. Okay. Uh, I would never have anything like this in China. Mm. Uh, taste, I'll give it a six. It's pretty good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, just from the look of it, because you know, my wife loves shrimp, so mm. she's always ordering that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've never seen one like that before, so just from the look of it, the authenticity is way down there, mm -hmm. you know, probably like a two or three. Mm -hmm. Now, we had our breakfast here, mm -hmm. kind of a late lunch, mm -hmm. but we have to save a lot more room because this episode is all covering Cantonese food. 
Correct. So we started with the average Cantonese meal that you'd have earlier on. Mm. We're going to have some Cantonese dinner items later on at uh, actually one of our friends' restaurants mm. yep. downtown. Yeah, so we've got no problem filming there because, <laughs> you know, he's actually one of our subscribers and a friend of ours. And he was just like, hey, you know, his uncle is it his, it's his uncle, right? Yeah. His uncle runs a, a restaurant where they do Cantonese food. So we can have some nice, you know, sort of authentic Cantonese food there and uh, try it out. I'd say, you know, that place we just went to, really good food. Yeah, it's, the dim sum's pretty good. It's pretty good, but it's not very authentic. Right, it's got its own flair, and that's yeah. not, not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's not. Right? It's not very authentic, but it tastes very good. It tastes good. I and liked it, I liked it. I liked it too. I can heartily suggest it. If you mm. want to get a kind of a taste of China that's not authentic, but it's kind <laughs> of the same. Yeah. 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 Right down to the <laughs> spitting. Yeah, go, oh yeah, exactly. Even, <laughs> even the spitting's authentic, so yeah. yeah we'll awesome. see you at the next restaurant. Absolutely, see you there. Sea milk. Yes. We are currently still riding, full. Yeah, and we're riding <laughs> up these really ridiculous hills here yeah, in San dude. Francisco. It's nuts, eh? Yeah. I remember playing video games when I was a kid, uh, like racing games. Yeah. Like old games, like test drive and stuff. And they'd have levels in San Francisco, and it's always my dream to drive up these things and like, like jump. Like ramp. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it cool? Absolutely. I mean, I I would maybe try that on a bike, but not in right. a car. I wouldn't try that on anything in traffic. The traffic's pretty bad here. It's not China bad. No, it's not. It's pretty bad. You reckon we can... Oh, there we go. We can go. Green arrow, we're ready. Yeah, it's it's insane. I mean, I'm surprised that the cars here don't break. You right, know, just right. from... You see them parked at 45 degree angles. And right. So it's really ridiculously weird here. Right. Um, but it's so cool. It's got its... It, I mean, it's unique, isn't it? I I'm absolutely loving like this. walking around the streets. It's awesome. Like, I know why people are thin now, man. My shins are burning. They're so <laughs> sore. It's just treacherous uphills. I don't know how they park on the, I, I some know. of these roads. I know. It's just How does the cars ridiculous. not roll down the hill? Yeah, I'll just flip over. Yeah. I mean, remember we were walking there, there's cars yeah. parked at like 45 degree angles. I know. It was absolutely insane. I'm, no, loving, I, I'm I, loving it. Yeah, I think this is a great city. It's one of my favorite cities in America yeah, so far. Mine too. It's so cool. Mine too. Um, anyway. Yeah, we are now heading actually out of the city slightly. I, I guess we could still say we're it's in, the, in the Bay Area. It's in the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. And we're headed to, um, actually, as, as we mentioned before, our subscribers, uncles, Restaurant. Yeah, now the, the good thing about this is that unlike Yelp or TripAdvisor, all these places that say, I had really good so and so and so. For example, like today's Mancock Bakery, right? Everyone was saying it was great, but it wasn't authentic. It wasn't authentic, right? No. Now, sometimes the most authentic places are going to be in the places that you would never think of. For example, this guy, yeah. he is from Guangdong Province. Okay. okay. And he started a sushi restaurant. Okay. Now, we are not there to eat sushi. Sometimes you got to go to places that have real food behind the scenes, yes, right? Yes, yes, So this is gonna be a hole in the wall place, um, and he cooks home style, straight up Cantonese food, not restaurant style. Okay. So this is kind of what we're aiming to find, these yeah, kind of yeah. places, right? A polar opposite to what we had earlier. Why did they, <laughs> they say quiet through tunnel? Are you gonna rev it? <laughs> All right, let's hear that. that. That's nice. Probably because people are walking. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess they don't want you like honking your horn and stuff, right? Yeah, I guess so. I guess uh, so. Anyway, let's yeah. uh, head there and go through the uh, despicable traffic of San Francisco. Can't wait. And uh, get some food in our belly, which is still full. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you at the restaurant. Our餐館就是叫做城吉思漢
啊，本地人要中國菜嘅話，就都係講個 quality 咯。如果 quality 好嘅話，價錢 OK 嘅都佢都接受嘅。Winston, look at this spread. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. <laughs> It does look actually really good. Now we have a bunch of dishes today. Yeah, we got pepper beef. We, we do. We got uh, chow fun. Got well, chow fun, yeah. Yeah, bok choy. Yeah. We got a little bit of a fusion here. It's kind of you get this kind of thing in Hong Kong, in Hong right? Hong Kong, for sure. Yeah. We, we're trying to represent Guangdong and Hong Kong here. Yeah. We have uh, yushang tianzi, which is mm -hmm. eggplant. And we got the duck, roast duck, right? Now, a couple of these are going to have kind of elements from other things, but that's what you get with Cantonese food on higher and medium ends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very used to going to higher end Cantonese restaurants Ooh. with my wife's family, I should say my family, yeah. my in-laws. <laughs> Sorry. It's your, it's your family too. Yeah. So I'm very used to going to these very higher end ones. Kind of once a year we have a dinner and you know, you sit around the big round tables. I've got to say the decor in this place is not authentic at all. No, of course it's not. It's a fusion restaurant. It's called Genghis, the, like the, Genghis Khan. The wonderful thing about that is actually, yeah. the boss is telling us what a challenge it was to cater to the, the white kind of American people yeah. and also the Asian population, because it's half and half here, 50 And they're, they're all very picky, so. Yeah. But the, one of the secret things about their menu is that they have authentic Cantonese food. They do. You could get like in the best restaurants in Guangdong. And from the look of it, it looks awesome. It does. I mean, just looking at it, like you say, it looks incredibly authentic, but let's just try it. I'm getting, I think we should start with the duck. Okay. Meat should be hot. Let's, let's All right. have it. I'll so, get you a piece, okay? Okay, thank you, yeah. Let's try this out. It looks amazing. It certainly does. Thank you for the duck neck or whatever. No, it's... No, I'm kidding. That's not duck neck. That's a part of a leg. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this looks fantastic. It does. Give and it, it smells really good like a plum sauce. Usually the plum sauce is something you dip it into, but they've kind of drizzled they, it on there. They kind of amped it up a little bit. It looks very artisanal. Let's try it. Wow. Mm. Mm. It's like a plum brandy. <laughs> it's got alcohol in it. Yeah, I'm sure it does actually. Mm. It's very good. I like it. Mm. This duck here is very much your roast duck you'd get in Guangdong cuisine, but mm. almost like with a French twist on it. Yeah. That, normally, you know, whenever I'm eating duck like this, it's normally part of like a combination. Right. right. A little bit of a uh, chow chow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit of duck like a and then yeah. uh, like pipaya, whatever, right. you know, all that stuff together. This is an entirely different taste. It's very, very good. Mm. I mean, it, uh, oftentimes, unless it's got that really crispy, amazing skin, I don't particularly love duck and goose. It's got to be that perfect Cantonese, like mm. hanging in the rack goose. This is really good, but a, a different take on it. Mm -hmm. For, I mean, it's, it's a little bit sweet, it's crispy, it's rich. Almost a Western preparation in terms of how it was roasted. Right? Yes. It's almost like a roast chicken. Yeah. For authenticity in terms of like what I could order in Guangdong, I could get that in Hong I'm Kong. I'm giving it a three. I could get that in Hong Kong, but for Cantonese food in Guangdong, I'm giving yeah. that a three. Yeah. For yeah. authenticity. Taste? Taste. Gonna give, gonna give that a seven. It was really good. Really good. It is, as far as duck's concerned, probably the best tasting duck I've had. Sure. I'm gonna give it a. Mm, let's go for, a, for an eight. Mm. <laughs> right. So, what are you going to choose, or do you, do you still want something? Okay, you're just going to choose another one? Oh, tiazza. Eggplant? Let me ask you. Mm. When you lived in South Africa, did you like go out of your way to eat eggplant? No. Why? No. Because I don't like it. Here did I. For those of you who don't know what eggplant is, it's also called aubergine. Thanks for talking to like 3% of our audience. For some reason, when I moved to China, all of that changed. Because eggplant tastes way better in Chinese cooking. It it does. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. Thank you. Thank you. It does taste better, but there's a problem with eggplant in China. Right. If you order it as a street food at a barbecue or right. something, it's more garlic than eggplant. That's and the I wonder, hate that. That's the wonderful thing about the Cantonese preparation, yeah. which is yushang chiazza. Yeah. It's got a little bit of uh, fish paste in it. Yeah. It's got a little bit of uh, sweetness to it, and then they cook it in a clay pot. Yeah. It usually tastes awesome. And there's not garlic, so this is one of the better ones. Right. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, that's very good. It's again incredibly authentic. I'll give it a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten for authenticity. Yeah. Taste? I'm gonna go for a nine because I love yushang chiz. I love this dish, and this is better than the stuff I usually get in Beijing. I agree with you that the way Chinese mm, people cook it's way better. It's way better than in the West. This is and, really yeah. yummy for egg. Mm. Mm. We got the pepper beef, but I'm thinking we should try this. Okay. This is basically bok choy, 
And this is a very common dish. I get this, well, I don't get this, but you know, whenever I go out for family dinners, it's right. always on the table. And we've got a medley of mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Cantonese people are super obsessed with their vegetables and their soup. These, you get these massive big mushrooms here. Yeah, and yeah. there's like three different kinds. There's enoki mushrooms, there's these normal white butt, butt mushrooms, and you get these like shiitake sort of mushrooms. And those are fine. Yeah. Try a little bit I of the have, see you tomorrow mushrooms. I don't. <laughs> yeah. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I have to preface this by saying there's absolutely nothing special about this dish. It's sure. just that you'll get it everywhere and that's why we ordered it. Yeah, we have to try it because we're, it's all about authenticity, right? So. Now, I have to say something. You know, when you talk to Chinese people and you're talking about different kinds of tastes and flavors, mm. they always say that Guangdong food is very bland. Mm. Qing dander, you know? Mm. So it's got no, no real flavor, no real taste. That's not true. I think what they're trying to say is that it lacks Huge amounts of chilies and huge amounts of spices because right. of course it There's has a flavor. flavor. Of course, this is very flavorful. Right. The chick. That, that's the, sorry. The duck. Yeah, flavorful. incredibly flavorful. But it's not like it's going to burn your mouth. Right. Right. It's right. not like salty. I think a lot of people in China are used to seeing things like Sichuan cuisine, which yeah. is covered, in, like you said, covered in chilies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Covered in sauce. Covered in all this stuff. And Cantonese food isn't like that. Right. No, it's it's braised. It's mm. boiled. It's steamed. Right. Yeah. Time time for authenticity for this one. Yes, yes. I'm gonna give it a six out of ten because it's just very vegetable. It is. It's, it's, but it's good. It's bland, but it's healthy. It's I'm kind gonna, of nice to break up things. Right? Yeah, definitely gonna give it a ten out of ten for authenticity because it is. Mm. I'm gonna give it about a five maybe for taste because it's nothing special like you said. This restaurant does it really well though. Mm, mm, mm. If you're after this bok choy mushroom medley as you call it. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you something, dude. We filmed this whole kind of series that we've done. This is like probably one of the best meals. It's really yummy. It is. It's really good. It's and kind of changed my perspective. Look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with you on that. I mean, there are a lot of foods which are better for a Western palate usually. You know, we're talking about Xinjiang food, Dongbei food, mm. but certain dishes in Cantonese food because Cantonese food's kind of like a real divider because. Right. It's got the best and the worst. Because Cantonese that's food, well said. that's where you get the, the weird like intestine, pig intestines, the the right. the, the, the feng zhuai, you know, the right. chicken feet, the chicken heads, the weird soups, the disgusting like pig's blood, dog penis. I don't know what you know. It all comes right. in Cantonese food, like the really disgusting stuff, you know. But then you've got also this really good stuff as well. So if you know how to pick and choose, you can have a feast. Agreed, man. Yeah. Dude, I gotta so, say cheers. This is an absolutely. awesome meal. Bringing back a lot of memories. It's it like is. we never left. It's like we never left. Mm. Woo, doggy, I'm full today. What a luscious meal. I wasn't expecting that. That was too good. I really, I, I, I said this before at dinner, and I said... I really didn't want to eat Cantonese food tonight. Yeah. It's something yeah. I eat all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm on this trip, and I kind of want one day where I can have some food that I like. But that was freaking delicious. It was. Not only because it was authentic, mm. you know, but it was just better. And, oh man, we sound so bad. We keep saying, like, the I American... Know, I know, the, I know. The Chinese food in America is better but than the food in China. it's Chinese people cooking it, man. That guy yeah. was freaking awesome. He was yeah. from, from Guangdong. He was like a Lao Xiang. He was like a brother. Absolutely. And I think we have to stress that. It's that... We've got Chinese chefs, proper Chinese people speaking. He speaks Cantonese, but mm -hmm. we were also speaking Mandarin right. the whole time. He speaks mm -hmm. Mandarin fluently. Right. Um, he's got Chinese chefs. Right. He's using Chinese recipes, mm. and it's down to the ingredients, man. It's so there's, you know, if you take the same ingredients and you give it to somebody in mainland China, they will make something just as good. Real Chinese food's freaking delicious. It is absolutely. We can say that. And I think what lets it down a lot of the times is just the ingredients. Yeah, I agree. But even with crappy ingredients, it tastes good. That's so. true. <laughs> Let's get on the road, man. Uh, yeah, we absolutely have to. Ooh, yeah, going to be a long drive, but yep. uh, let's do it. Right. What do you say we get Xinjiang food tomorrow? Oh, yeah, let's do that. Similka, are you ready for some hearty food? Not really. I've been eating way too much these days. 
definitely feeling a lot heavier. So I, was, that way. I will say this though. Yeah. If you had prefaced that by saying, Sea milk, are you ready to eat some Uyghur food? I'd say, hell yeah. Really? I love it. Okay. I absolutely love it. What about you? Yeah, okay. Well, let's just be completely honest here. The most foreign friendly food that you can find in China is Xinjiang food or Uyghur food, you know, from right. the western part of China. And right. the reason is it's because it's basically just like Turkish food, you know, mm. Middle Eastern food. It's the kind of thing that you will find in the West. Right. So, for instance, if you go for a night out in London, the most typical thing to do is to go for a kebab. Right. You know, after you've gone drinking at the pub right. and all that kind of thing. Right. And that kebab, that kind of food, is pretty much Uyghur food. Right. You know, they're equivalents. They look so much like Westerners that actually when we go to some more remote areas of China, oftentimes people don't expect to see someone from South Africa or someone from America, so they'll yeah. automatically assume, say, Ni shi Xinjiang rin ma? Yeah, yeah, they'll ask, are you a Xinjiang, Xinjiang person? Because it's more feasible for them to see a Chinese Xinjiang person yeah. right, than, a, than a Westerner like us. So green eyes, a, lot of, a couple of them have some blonde, like lighter color kind hair. Kind of lighter stuff. color yeah. hair, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing is they... They're, they look more Arabic, you know, right. because basically well, Xinjiang, yeah, they are. And Xinjiang used to be called, I think, Western Turkmenistan or something East like East Turkestan. That? Oh, East Turkestan. Yep. Sorry, excuse me. I'm not. It's all right. To be honest, I'm not very well up on that part of the world. But gotcha. um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. It's a it's a big Muslim majority there, right. and uh, you know they got mosques and right. You know they wear little hats and everything. It's a it's a part of China that looks nothing like China. Yeah, pretty much has nothing to do with China. Let's and be honest. Of course, there's all sorts of political tension over there. So, right. uh, you know, we've we've haven't been there ourselves right. just it's because it's us. too too tough for us to be able to actually go there. Right. And yeah. Film. Right. Yeah, and film. We'd be just kicked out or whatever. So. One thing we do make a habit of is eating Xinjiang food. Yes, because in it's China. It's amazing. Right. I mean, it's it's all the kind of lamb and a, a, a couple of the restaurants I won't let you drink, obviously, because mm -hmm. it's a Muslim thing and that's a right. bit annoying. The difficult, most difficult task for us was to find a Uyghur restaurant here because most Uyghur people don't make it out of China. Yeah. It's a heavily controlled area. It's difficult for them to get out. So this is quite the treat that we were able to track one down. But you said that. But remember, the first night we arrived in San Diego, we're sitting in a restaurant having a massive overpriced hamburger. and. A guy just came out from the street and he actually right. came into the restaurant. He's like, I love your videos, you know, so cool to see you. And he, you know, took a video with us. Hey, we've met a subscriber from Xinjiang. That's oh so God, cool. So What's your name, man? Uh, Dulcia. Awesome. Very cool. Hey, can you help me tell everybody to stay awesome? Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Always. Right. And he's from Xinjiang. Right. So it's pretty interesting. It was really interesting to, to actually run into a subscriber from Xinjiang. It's right. Weird, huh? Let's yeah. go uh, check it out. Absolutely, I can't wait. Hi, welcome to Samoa Uyghur Cuisine. My name is Patar. I'm from Xinjiang province from China. First, you know, the, we don't have that much Uyghur people in this area, especially in, even in America. We don't have that much people. The Uyghurs is like our ethnic group. I've been the very open restaurant for almost seven months now, where the partners, three partners opened that restaurant. The Uyghur food is mostly we're using like the lamb, like the other Chinese food, they, they have a lamb, but not that much us. And then we have the kebab also, and the whole lamb kebab. And then we have dapenji, maybe you guys know, but dapenji is still there's some spices from the Chinese. Uh, spices but the most of the like hand pulled noodle and the, some like recipes is like from all uh, from us and there's a lot but because we're limit of the stuff and then some of the items we can't do it here because of the some equipment thing is but still uh, like some like 80% of Xinjiang food we're providing here of course uh, if you want to open a restaurant it's, it takes a lot of money and then we have the have a chef and you know it, it takes a lot of work there so it's difficult Winston look at this feast I wasn't so hungry before but I definitely am now oh yeah this <laughs> looks fantastic should we start with some uh, some Xinjiang Uyghur tea this is a milk tea absolutely and it looks like kind of the Mongolian style kind that we've had before mm -hmm. a little bit salty yeah Should it's be. definitely it's it's salty it's very savory almost like a milk nut soup 
<laughs> yeah, it is. It tastes like soup. It's really, tea. it's really tasty though. Yeah, it's very hearty. It's very got a lot hearty. of different uh, nuts in it, like walnuts I'm seeing in there, and all kinds of weird spices. Yeah. But it is very milky. More milk than tea. More soup milk than tea. Does that make very sense? Very hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about what we've got on the table before sure. we do anything. This over here is called big plate chicken or da, da panji, panji yeah. right? It's probably one of our favorites. It's one of those things that if we go out to get Xinjiang food, we always order it. Oh, absolutely sure. have to. Now, what this usually is, is a tomato-based sauce with uh, different parts of the chicken, with mm -hmm. potatoes, carrots, uh, peppers, and then usually with these big, big, flat hand-pulled noodles, right? Absolutely. Sp speaking of hand-pulled noodles, that's what this is over here. Yeah. yeah. We got the lamb in over here, right? Absolutely. And uh, here's a little bit of trivia. I know in the West, we when we're talking about sort of Asian noodles, a lot mm -hmm. of people say ramen, mm -hmm. okay? And there's a reason for that, right? It comes from Japanese. Mm -hmm. And actually a lot of the words for Asian food we get from Japan. So like tofu, for instance, comes right. from Japan because I guess the first time it became popular in the West, it was from Japan, you know, like in sushi restaurants mm -hmm. and stuff. So, like, oh, this is tofu. But uh, the original mm -hmm. name is from Chinese, it's mm -hmm. dofu, right? And right. the same with uh, ramen is lamian, which means Pool noodles. noodles, yeah. So la means to pull, means noodles. This is the Middle Eastern kind of take on that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And it's usually cooked with all kinds of delicious Middle Eastern type spices. You can get a little tinge of Chinese cooking in it when you got the woodier mushrooms and stuff. Oh, yes. That definitely brings the Chinese influence into it. What else we got? Uh, okay. We've got these like samosa type things mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. I love Hello. those. I, I love those. Of lamb, those, those are like, I, to be honest, those are probably one of my favorite dishes over there. You can't, you can't say it's your favorite yet, though. We haven't tried anything, mm. but in the past. We also got our lamb kebabs, which are fantastic looking, bigger mm. than the ones we're used, used to on the side of the road. I mean, yeah, you know, we were at that barbecue restaurant, mm -hmm. the Dongbei barbecue. Mm. Yeah, that was delicious, but you saw how small it was right. in comparison. That's like almost a whole lamb on there. That's Freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. These are uh, your lamb meat pies, which are mm. really, really tasty. Flaky crust looks really delicious. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, what do you want to start with? It's kind of difficult, but maybe maybe we should start with something a bit manageable. Should we go for the lamb It's meat? right in front of us. Okay, all right. Let's go for I'm it. put my uh, milk tea down over there. Now, because Xinjiang food is very different than Chinese food, we're not using chopsticks, because that's not what the locals do. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Every time I've been to a Xinjiang restaurant, they got yeah. chopsticks. Well, chopsticks yeah. Anyway, it's probably just for the local Chinese yeah. teas, yeah? Meat's good. Mmm. Wow. I want this stuff. Come mm. off the plate. There we go. Mmm. You know what's crazy about this style of la mm hmm it's almost like it's Italian food in a way because mm -hmm. it's got a tomato based sauce, but way more savory and mm. a little bit more spicy. It's also more hearty. It's, it's definitely more hearty, more, hearty, for sure. you know? more meaty and things mm -hmm. like this, but it's the chew and the bite of the hand pulled noodles is it's completely different than any other noodle you've had, including yeah. pasta. I mean, I, I literally was in the kitchen watching him make mm. these noodles, and you know, it makes such a big difference. Mm. Because it's fresh, mm. you know? And make it out of their, their flour over it's there. It's boiled everything. pasta, right? Yeah, it's it's awesome. And that's what gives it that, that flavor. And it's always a winner. Right. I can always suggest it to any any foreigner who's in China. If you want something that kind of is delicious and mm. very Western style, you know, go for that. No, it may look like I'm crying, but it's actually because I just burned my mouth on this milk tea. <laughs> 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 it is delicious, but I'm not crying from that, I promise you. Um, you're crying because you're missing all the Xinjiang food in China. <laughs> this is uh, yeah. this is amazing, and better is, than the normal la mian that I usually eat. Yeah. Again, actually, this one I would say it's a little bit better because I like the crisp on the lamb that they mm. put in it. Mm. The sauce is also much more strongly flavored here, which yeah. I like a lot better. Yeah. It's really nice. So okay, we've got to give mm. it an authenticity rating. What uh, are you going to give it? You go first. Ten out of ten for authenticity. It's mm -hmm. got everything that I'm used to in a really good Xinjiang la mian. Mm -hmm. um, for taste, I'm going to go for a 8.5, which is absolutely amazing. And if I was a little bit hungrier, I'd probably give it a 9. <laughs> it's really good. Yep. Yeah. All right. We have the uh, lamb kebab here. Yeah, this is going to be this going to be good. Mm. I'm not used to having so much of that really, really good flavor in one bite, because mm. usually you can just rip a whole chore off in your mouth, mm -hmm. and you get a little morsel of meat. This is, I mean, I'm, it's almost like it was marinated. Mm. It's not just normal meat flavor. Mm. It's got a really special cumin and really rich kind of uh, Middle Eastern spice to it. Mm. It's good. It's delicious. Mm. That's really good. 
Uh, the flavor, yes, 10 out of 10 for authenticity mm. for me. Mm. That's because I often have these uh, these lamb kebabs at the Xinjiang mm. restaurant near my place. I'll be honest with you though, the meat is smaller there. Mm -hmm. Not that much smaller, because mm. um, they do make a big thing out of it being a big, you know, it's even called like a da chuan. Da chuan, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the flavor on there, it's 100% authentic, so 10 out of 10. But I'm going to have to give it a probably a 9 out of 10 for taste, because I've never had one that that, that is that good before. Yeah, that's yeah. better. <laughs> yes. Okay. I know your eye. I've literally I wanna, watched I you watch the that. entire time. I want to eat that. I don't want to watch it. I want to eat it. Just sit there and watch it. Yeah, I'm gonna eat it. Give me one. Yes, of course. Here we are. Thanks. Okay. I can't wait. Because these, really th these are my, my favorite, usually, so. Mmm. 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 Reminds me of some type of Rus Russian dumpling I've had before. <laughs> what with like um, a cumin flavor, lamb mm. flavor. Really good. You like it? Mm, fantastic. You mean Pirushki or whatever they call it? Mm. Right? Mm. It's just like Pirushki, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, really good. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Mm, that's good. This is. I'll let you do the authenticity mm. first. Mm. I honestly can't give it an authenticity because, believe it or not, mm -hmm. I've never had these at a Xinjiang place before. This is my first one. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I love them. But for taste, I'm going to give it a nine because it's freaking delicious. Mm. It is. It's, uh, okay. The thing is, it is. Pretty much the same. Mm. So authenticity, I'm going to give it a nine, mm -hmm. um, and that's just because the ones that I normally have over there actually have a bit more of a buttery flavor. It's as if mm. they've added a lot more butter, and there isn't that this strong one's a bit butter lighter. flavor. Yeah. So I really, really, really like these, but I'm going to give it a nine out of ten for mm. authenticity, and I'm going to give it a ten out of ten for taste because, like I've been saying in a lot of our videos, I could eat these all day and all night. I dare you. I dare you. That's well, probably a bad idea health-wise, right? I'd have to pace it out, you know, it'd be like <laughs> one every hour or something. Okay. Is that how we're going to eat samosas for now? <laughs> yeah. Should we go for one of these meat pies? Mm -hmm. Okay. Before they get cold. This looks like a very similar filling to the last one, but mm. this one looks butterier. Yeah, that I mean, makes sense. it's just... Like a pie crust. I mean, you can see inside, it's just got, right. got the lamb that's been, you know... It's like a little... Lamb. Oh, but it's got minced onions in it. Okay. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. Give it a shot. Hmm. No, that I like better. Really? Mm-hmm. You know why? Why? I like the pie crust aspect to it. Okay. I think it goes with the lamb super well. Mm. And the onions cut through the greasiness of the lamb, which is really nice. Mm. Um, this is awesome. I imagine you could get this pretty much everywhere. Every time I see like documentaries about Xinjiang or like footage from there, they're see that? selling these in the street, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, there's some... Mm. <clears throat> this crust is basically just deep fried in a mm -hmm. wok full of oil. Mm. Right? I like that. Mm. It's not bad. I, I don't like it as much as the samosa thingies, but uh, I'm going to give this, because I have had this in, you know, again, same, same Xinjiang thing. It, it does taste very similar. Mm. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 for authenticity, authenticity because yeah. it, is, it is a bit different. Mm -hmm. But uh, taste-wise, I actually don't like it as much as those ones. I'm mm. going to give it a 7 out of 10. What about you? I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 for authenticity. I've had one very similar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for taste. I absolutely love that. I could eat that all day. Mm -hmm. Dip that in some yogurt, sour cream. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Or even slurp up some of the sauce. Sure thing. But yeah, that's bigger. So one every hour compared to one of those every hour. I think I'd survive the day. You wouldn't. Follow us on our uh, Xinjiang diet. <laughs> where you can eat fried foods once every hour and keep the weight <laughs> off. Because uh, the Xinjiang minority are Muslim, mm -hmm. a lot of the Xinjiang restaurants you cannot drink alcohol. Right. Alcohol. Yeah. There are some where you can, but those yeah. typically are the less authentic ones, and usually the Hui Muslims, yeah. not the Xinjiang Muslims, who tend to be more devout in their, yeah, exactly. in their exactly. beliefs and rules. Anyway, we got the Dapanji. This is the most uh, famous dish out of the entire province. Probably the, one of the biggest, uh, most famous dishes that you would know about if you have heard of Xinjiang sure. cuisine before. Sure. And it looks stellar. It, it does. looks fantastic. And I have eaten this so many times. I got a funny story about this while we eat it. Yeah, you dig in first. Serve it? I don't know, man. You, you just dig in. I mean, get a piece of chicken. I'll get some of the noodles. You just got to do that. Yeah. Uh, I was hanging out with my friend. Yeah. And I had just discovered this dish at my house, like at the, the Xinjiang place outside my house. Yeah, yeah. In China. Yeah. And I was in his town. Mm. And I told him about it. I was like, we got to go find a Xinjiang restaurant because most towns in China have one, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. I was like, you got to try this da panji. It's amazing. Yeah. So we went there, right? Yeah. yeah. And. They were like, it's not on the menu. So I asked them, I was like, can you make that bungee? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, we could totally do that. 
They yeah. charge us like 15 bucks. Some of it wasn't a big deal, but for a massive one. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, because they are. They're normally much bigger. This is like a small. Here you go. Yeah, thanks. This is a small dive bungee. Right. You know, like the big ones are just. You could actually order a big one here, but anyway. Stupid big, yeah. They, uh, they were like, we'll make it for you tomorrow. So we had to kind of book it ahead of time. Right. So I thought it was kind of weird, but anyway, they call us back and they're like, okay, can you bring your biggest pot? And we were like, oh, yeah. what? So oh, yeah. we had to bring yeah. an entire pot, and then they brought it to our house, and yeah. then we invited them sh to share it with us because it yeah. was too big. So we sat down with them, and then we shared the meal in our house. It was really fun. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. But basically, dapanji, like I said, tomato-based, thick pulled noodles, and you got your chicken. It's usually stewed in it. Yeah. Uh, so it's very tender. I'm going to try some of the noodles first with the me sauce. Me too, me too. Mm. That's really good. Mm. I'm going to try some of that sauce on its own, mm -hmm. just so I can get an idea what kind of spice is in there. Mm. Some well, paprika, maybe? Yeah, definitely yeah, red some, pepper. Some paprika in there. Mm. Um, maybe a tiny bit of vinegar, but it's not too sour like mm. some of the ones I've had. Mm. And you know what I love about this dish? What? It's cooked for a while, like stewed. So kind of all the flavors from everything get kind of melded in there. Mm. And it almost, it's almost, a lot of people try to avoid this. Is to, you know when you have hot pot and you put in noodles afterwards and like, don't do it, don't hold them in there too long, it's going to get starchy. This sauce gets really starchy, but sure. I love it. Mm. It's super thick and it's so much better than Chinese soups and stuff. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. The, the chicken's delicious as well. Let me it's try. incredibly tender, it kind of just falls off the bone. Mm. You know what I mean? It's mm. better than chicken I usually get in China. Mm. Mm. This dapanji is spot on. Mm. Authenticity is absolutely spot on. Yeah. 10 out of 10. I agree. For authenticity. And I'm going to give it another solid nine. I think it's a great winter food. Mm. Sit around with your buddies. Get the get the big one. Yep. Divvy it out. Just mm. talk. You know, enjoy it slowly. It's a great stew. It's awesome. Agree. Agree. It's fantastic. I'm also going to give it a 10 out of 10 for authenticity because it has the exact same flavor that I'm used to. Mm. But I have to be honest, the chicken does taste better. It does. It's you know, really good. Which is weird because usually we have an opinion that the chicken in China tastes better than the chicken in the West. It mm. usually does, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure why. Just maybe just different strain of chicken. Different strain. Different breed. Today I learned that chicken is bacteria. Yeah, exactly. A different breed. <laughs> anyway. Bacteria. Yeah. But the thing is, um, it's really delicious. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Okay. I mean, you know, it's good just like everything else here I don't think we've had a single dish here that was bad no and I hate to say this again this is not again this is a first okay but I have a feeling that most people that want to try different Chinese food from what they're used to mm -hmm. are gonna probably like this the best because it is so hearty mm -hmm. and so tasty and so flavorful Absolutely. I think the average Western palate likes a little bit more flavor than uh, what most Cantonese cooking has to offer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this whole trip we've been trying the, the you know, the regulars, like mm. the, the top big five or whatever, you know, although I don't know if it's five, but whatever, the big four or the big yeah, three whatever, or whatever. the bigs. Yeah, the hot pots, mm. the spicy Sichuan food, you know, the sort of more bland Cantonese food. Right. But it's all very typical what you would expect China to be. I don't think people expect this to be China. But no. don't forget, this is a part of China, and it's a part of Chinese cuisine. Right. And Everywhere in China you can get this. For sure, and if you look around, everyone in this restaurant is Chinese, yeah, and they're absolutely. coming because they enjoy it too. Yeah, uh, It's a very popular cuisine for a very good reason, and it is just better than a lot of cuisines I've had in China. Yeah, so look, if you're ever in this area, this is in the Bay Area, come check out this restaurant. It's like only you know? one Xinjiang restaurant around yeah, here. Yeah, we searched and searched and we yeah. found this. But you know, good. if you can't find it, if you don't live around here, do a little search for Uyghur mm -hmm. food, and it's... U Y G H U R is mm -hmm. it? That's correct. Okay, it's a bit bit of a weird spelling there, mm -hmm. but it's pronounced Wigger. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like a white guy with dreadlocks. I'll have to cut that up. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah. Anyway, All right. it's pronounced Wigger, and uh, if you search for it find something in the area, just go give it a try. I don't think you. I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. <laughs> right? Mm. Can't stop eating. <sighs> I'm so full. Thank you. That was really interesting, to be honest. I it didn't was. expect to find Xinjiang food in America. No, and it was a lucky find, to mm. be honest. Mm. And uh, thank you to Betts for finding that for us. Absolutely, yeah. A subscriber of ours is actually mm -hmm. the person who put us onto this place. Mm -hmm. And, man, it was just as good as I was expecting. In fact, better. It yeah, was better. It was better than what I thought. You know, we, sure. when we set off this afternoon to go try Uyghur food in, in America, I was like, well, it's going to be good, but... Right. 
I didn't know it would be that good. Right. I actually had no <laughs> idea it was going to be that good. But you yeah. know what? We got a lot more food to eat, so I think we should get on the road and yeah. go. Oh! It's okay. It's just a little bit. Okay. I know we got a lot more food to eat tomorrow. Yeah. So let us get on the road and get ready for that. Our bellies uh, need a little rest. Is Sichuan food a good hangover cure? I mean, it's spicy, right? Is spicy stuff good for hangovers? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's usually oily stuff, you know, like a good greasy fry up, which is what I really want to eat right now. Oh, me too, man. But I do love Sichuan food, you know? Mm. I really do. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, in case you guys are wondering, we had a bit of a heavy night last night, you know? We, um, we've been doing this, this non-stop food tour, but we decided to kind of take a day off. We needed to do some editing and stuff. Yeah. I think we went a little overboard. Yeah, yeah. Before we go to this restaurant, um, didn't you grow up in this area? Yeah, actually. This is uh, right outside Mountain View where I grew up as a kid. So it's kind of weird to be back here, to be honest. It's really nice. I, I mean, I've really been enjoying We've been stopping in all these little towns. And, yeah. You know, unfortunately for you, not a lot of vape here. Well, you're allowed to vape. No, I saw a sign that says no vaping yeah. well i mean it's it's an awesome area man like you've yeah. got google we passed what nvidia huawei that being said uh, i didn't know that there were so many chinese people in this area because growing up there there wasn't yeah yeah i didn't see any chinese people it's like half chinese now it's, it's kind of crazy I, I i'm blown away so far on this trip to see how many chinese communities there are i know we're about to go burn and numb our tongues because sichuan food actually is known for mala which is this uh, kind of numbing spice. Yeah. So in the Sichuan region of Western China, in this province, they grow this uh, Sichuan peppercorn, they call it. Yeah. And it's kind of the signature flavor of Sichuan food, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's we're, we're going to be able to tell very quickly if it's original or not, because it's got a very distinctive taste. Right, know? that's true. So I guess that's what we're going to go do now. Yeah, um, actually, a little thing about Sichuan, mm -hmm. for, those of, for those of you who don't know out there, it's kind of situated in the sort of middle west, western sort of part of China, yeah. would you say? It's western um, province for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's definitely western. Um, and it's very famous for a couple of things. Number mm -hmm. one, pandas. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, uh, there was that massive earthquake that in 2008. Earthquake, 2008 killed a bunch of people. I was there. Were you in China at that time? Uh-uh. Not yet. I, I came in the end of 08. Okay. It, it was quite a time to be in China. It was mm -hmm. insane. I remember, you know, they had like this minute of silence or whatever where everybody well it wasn't a minute of silence a minute of noise because mm. what they did is like around the entire country everybody honked their horns all the air raid sirens went off because you know all the cities have these massive air raid right. sirens right and it was quite surreal for like a minute it just non-stop this massive noise the entire city was just it was kind of crazy huh. let's go burn our mouths off <laughs> yeah not really looking forward to that but anyway let's do it Revo 都比较满意，所以我们也希望更多的客人能够来品尝我们的那个川菜。What a spicy looking feast! Before we even get stuck in here, I have to say I'm incredibly surprised because we're walking out here and it right. says Redwood Bistro. Right, I thought it was like some deli or like French restaurant. Or it doesn't look like a Chinese restaurant from the no. outside, so it's very, very easy to miss. Just spoke with the uh, manager over there. She's actually from Beijing, but the chefs are from uh, native Sichuan, like we were talking yeah. about. Just from the look of this, I gotta say, this all looks incredibly authentic. Like anything yeah. you'd get in Sichuan, right? Absolutely, I can't wait to taste it because they say the proof is in the eating. Yeah, what do you want to start with? I'll let you choose. The beef. The beef? I right. love that beef. It's actually one of the staples whenever I take friends out to eat in China. Right. You know, this is one of the things I always order. Right. It's, it's a safe bet. It's always good. It is. It is. Thank you. Awesome. It looks nice and crispy. It looks kind of spicy. Yeah. It looks That's like... They, no, didn't, they, they didn't skimp on the, the pepper cords there. No. You're gonna have a numb mouth. Here we go. Try it out. 
Mm. What does that taste like? It's a little different. Mm. You know, it's very crispy. It's very crispy, very nice. I it's definitely say, battered in something, though. I, I can't say that it's authentic, though. You know why? Why? It's beef. Yeah, it's real beef, isn't it? It's not training. Oddly enough, it doesn't really taste like beef, though. No. It really doesn't. It tastes like some other sort of meat. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't mean it's bad. No, not at all. Oh. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, I think I'm going to, on an authenticity rating. Yeah. Look, the flavor's actually pretty good. You got the spice, you got the pepper, you got that mana taste. Authenticity, I'm going to give it about a five. Me too. I'm going to go for taste. I'm going to give it a seven. It's pretty good. Yeah. I want to get into this uh, Xuan, Xuan La Yu. Mm which means sour, spicy fish. Yeah. And I have a feeling that this is going to be full of bones because I've never eaten Swan La Yu without bones all the way through it. Sure. Which you, I know you really enjoy. You're a big fan. Thank right? you very much. Uh, you know, I, it's one thing about eating fish in China is it's always full of bones. I hate it. In fact, eating anything in China usually has bones in it. Yeah, right? even tofu, it's weird. Cool. But this actually might not have too many bones. Let's give it a try. I mean, we are in America. You think mm. that they'd change it? So no bones. No bones. You're gonna be a big fan of that. Mm. It's good. There's <laughs> no bones, man. That's also one thing I must say. Yeah. The uh, broth that it's in is not super spicy and it's not super sour. Tastes great. Though. It is very good. It's kind of difficult to to judge authenticity on that. Though. What would you say? I, I'd say a that's a, a eight out of ten for authenticity. It's just not spicy enough for Sichuan food. But for taste, I'm gonna go for that an eight as well. That was pretty good. Mm. I like it. I, I normally Mild. don't like fish. You know, I don't like meat because there's no bones in that one, and it's actually very sort of soft and fluffy. It's really good. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten for taste. And I've definitely had that flavor before in China. And it's a sure. Sichuan restaurant. It's, it still has that mala. Right. It's got it that little bit of mala. I'm gonna give it a nine. Out okay. Of 10. Nice. Except the bones. This is their signature original redwood chicken. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can wait, see. wait, wait. Is that the town we're in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they say it's original redwood chicken, but it's got a lot of coriander on top of it. Mm. You know, so what do you call it? Cilantro? Yeah. Okay. Go either way, man. Go either way. And uh, it looks nice. Little chunks of chicken. Here we go. Thank I'll you. put it on your rice. Oh, thank you, Mom. <laughs> you know, um, I like the, the anise seed in there. Yeah, there that's, we go. That's a, you don't want to eat that. No. No, no, no you don't. That's one thing we haven't actually been explaining during our trip. A lot of the food in China, people, when they eat it, we've just been eating like the meat. Right. It's usually eaten like this on rice. On the rice, with, yeah. with rice together. It's just both you and I aren't big rice fans usually. So. This looks a lot like Kung Pao chicken. Yeah, it does. It doesn't taste anything like it. Mm. It's full of pickled beans. Mm. Very sour. It's great. Mm. That's really good. Better than Kung Pao chicken. It actually. is. I prefer it. Kung Pao chicken is too sweet. This is not sweet at all. Very spicy though. Mm. Kind of starting to burn my mouth. Mm. Um, but I like it. It's really good. It's definitely soy based. Soy sauce based. Mm -hmm. Heavily sal uh, salted and everything. So it's a very strong flavor. It's very, very salty. I think mm. if you did just ate it by itself without rice, I think it'd be quite difficult to, to eat You know, more than a spoonful of that. It's a good xia fan dish. Mm, yeah, which means right. uh, it helps the rice go down basically. Mm -hmm. It's good though, that's awesome. I can't say it's authentic though, if it's original chicken from Redwood City. Yeah. It's so, kind of tough. It's really good for Sichuan food, but again, it's got that very authentic ma la taste. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Sichuan food is you take anything and just add that ma la pepper and it's Sichuan food. It's kind of authentic, right? You could put ma la peppers on a hamburger and it's Sichuan. It's Sichuan, it? yeah. They probably That's, have it. They probably do. That's awesome. I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10 for taste. You can't give it an authenticity rating because it doesn't exist in yeah. Sichuan, but Absolutely. something like it probably does. I'm pretty sure that you will find dishes that are almost the same as this in China, though. Ooh. It's not westernized in any way. Yeah. So, maybe not citron authenticity, but China food authenticity, I'm going to give it a 7. My nose is running. <laughs> That's pretty spicy. <laughs> really good, then. The taste rating is going to be all the way up there. I'm also going to give it an 8. It's a bit too salty. I'd say dial down the salt a little bit, but other than that, fantastic. Okay, cool. What, what do you want to choose next? Go chat to the chef and yeah, tell we'll them go. that they did it all wrong. Yeah, exactly. Just joking. Uh, this is the beef tendon and onions. Very typical, very standard Sichuan dish for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're not a fan of beef tendons. I don't like beef tendons. You don't? No. Oh, I don't like any you're kind really of tendons out. or, you know. Do you remember me and you, like one of our first meals together was beef tendons? 
and you yes. were like eating it with gloves. Yes, I remember that. And you were like trying to trying to bite it off. It wasn't it was, very good. It was though. difficult. Yeah. This one's shaved nice and thin, so it's probably pretty easy to eat. Try it out. Oh, it's cold. Mm. Almost like a salad. I mean, it tastes like meat jello, really. You know when you leave jello out too long and it gets that hard film on the top? Absolutely. That's exactly what it tastes like. I'm going to start out with the taste rating. I'm going to give it like a three because I just don't like it. It's kind of bland. It's oily. It's like oily, bland gelatin. I'm going to give it a five. That's okay. okay. Yeah, I know but you, it like is, it. you like the weird stuff. Well, it's not that weird. It doesn't taste that weird. But it does lack in flavor. Mm-hmm. Authenticity, though, you know, I have that, that stuff's always on the table. That's somewhere. a 10 out of 10 for authenticity. Yeah, absolutely, sure. 10 out of 10. Usually used as a starter for this mm-hmm. other food. Not bad. You just got the noodles left now. Yeah. So You want to uh, dish them out? Yeah. I'm going to try my I best. Just, I wanted to avoid that. You know, I'm going to spill it everywhere. I'm, I'm the worst at dishing out noodles. What? <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe I shouldn't be doing this, to be fair. It's okay, I totally won't leave it in the video. Yeah, remember guys, we are hungover today. That is, <laughs> that is the excuse. Slightly. Yeah. Oops. I'll have these ones, because it's all over the table. Okay, you're very sweet. I it's like table nice noodles. Yeah. Nice. Oops. And, yeah. Well, this, to be fair, this one's kind of all over the table as well. You know what? <laughs> Here, enjoy. Thanks, all of it came out. <laughs> There's still some noodles in there. <laughs> this is supposed to be one of their signature dishes. Uh, I don't know, it looks a little heartier than what I'm used to in those Sichuan soup noodles. Mm. You know, um, this this kind of, in a way, reminds me of uh, lamian, you know? Yeah, it does lamian. look like lamian, yeah. doesn't it? Mm. It looks like it's full of pork mm. and uh, spinach. That is a 100% authentic mm. sort of hot and sour flavor that you get. Swan la mien. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It is swan la mien right there. Mm. It's got a lot of coriander. 10 out of 10 for authenticity for me. Yeah. It does taste better than what I'm used to though. Mm. You can get swan la mien at like truck stops and such one. This is not that. This is definitely like more care and you know a little bit of love went into this one. Yeah, for the sure. problem is usually. I feel like they make it spicy like this and hot to to disguise the fact that the meat is expired and that the oil is. And we're not talking about this one, by no, no, the way. No. We're talking about the ones yeah, you the, find at the in truck China. stops. Yeah. 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 And it's just to disguise the, the putrid meat and stuff. This one. Just You're making me good. real hungry. <laughs> this one's wow. really good, though. Thanks, this one's man. good. It's great. Mm. Yeah, we have fallen victim to some uh, some bad roadside food in China. That's for sure. I'm gonna give it a seven. Uh, for taste, actually. I'm going to give this a 8.5 for taste. I think it's really good. One thing I have to take a uh, score down is for the ease of dishing up because it could make it <laughs> a lot easier to dish up by, I don't know, cutting it up or something. Yeah, or you could just learn how to dish it out. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. So, like a... I think we have to wrap this up and i got to ask you, is Sichuan food good hangover food? No. No, I don't think so either. I think I it's was I was initially saying like I would love a hot bowl of spicy noodles for the hangover. No. It's exactly what I don't want right now. No. It's too spicy, it's really oily, and it's kinda not what you're looking for when you're not feeling, you know, hundred percent. However, if you like spicy food, which I actually do like spicy food, it's fantastic. You cannot go wrong. That's pretty spicy. You know, in the, in China there are quite a few provinces like Hunan. They claim that they're the, the king of spice, and you know that our food is spicy. But everyone knows the real king of spice in China is Sichuan. So try Sichuan food. I'm gonna throw a little accolade on there as well. It's the king of numb, and you will not know that feeling until you try Sichuan peppercorns, which is in every single dish on this yeah. table. So I can't feel my mouth. Fantastic! I really kind of enjoyed this. Let's get stuck in. Shall we? Okay, good. <laughs> well, it was Sichuan food. It was spicy. And it was bizarre, really. That place did not look like a Sichuan restaurant from the outside. It didn't at all. And like, it was actually funny talking to the people there. They've been in America for a while, so they have their favorite basketball players and teams in the mm-hmm. NBA and stuff. And they sound like Chinese people, but act like local Americans. Americans, yeah. It was pretty awesome. The food was on point as far as Sichuan food is concerned. You mm-hmm. know, it had that taste. So, yeah, I can ho- like really recommend it if you wanted to try it. I was talking to the owner actually. Um, he had just sent me a message and he was telling me about how his dad has actually been cooking before he could really properly stand. <laughs> so, like, and reach the stove. Oh. So, he'd like put stools up next to the stove and like cook mm-hmm. when he was just a few years old. That's like kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. It, and it is a very small mom and pop sort of a feeling to that place. So, yeah. I, I really liked it. I liked I did. it too. 
Not very good hangover cure food though. <laughs> Still gonna have to work on that. Yeah. Either hair way, of the dog. Yeah, hair of the dog. Um, if you guys are in the area, I'd say check it out yeah, for sure. sure. I it's, could recommend it. It's awesome. And finally, we have found Sichuan food. That's another big one to tick off the list. For sure. So, well, my friend, I think we have a lot of ground to cover today. Oh yeah, we do. We got a got a long road ahead of us. So we should probably just hit the road and get on with it. What do you reckon? Yeah. yeah all right. So guys, we've reached the end of our Quest for the Best Chinese in the USA series. We want to thank you for coming along with us on this little adventure and hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. It's been quite the journey and really a big eye-opener for us to see that you can actually find incredibly good Chinese food in America. And in some cases, to be quite honest, better Chinese food in America than you can find in China itself. So we bumped into a subscriber here in Tucson. Hi guys. Your name? I'm Sonny. Sonny. I'm from Tucson. I go, go to here uh, to the University of Arizona and I saw these guys out here and want to come say hi, see what they're doing. Awesome. They're not in China right now, so Very I was yeah, pretty surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's a random place to run into us. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it was really nice to see you guys. So, so nice. Hey. How are you doing? How's it going? I love this guy. Thank you. Cool. Can, can you help me tell everyone to stay awesome? Stay awesome? Stay yeah. Chinese. Yeah, that's cool too. And you have a YouTube channel? Yes, my channel is Vicky Soups. Vicky Soups, okay, cool. So nice to meet you guys. Nice that's to awesome. meet you guys. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Take see you around, eh? Nice meeting you. Right. You too. So, hey, just, just bumped into some subscribers. How's it going, man? Good. Hey, cool. very good. Can you guys do me a favor? Can you tell everyone out there to stay awesome? Stay awesome. Uh, that's so cool. Hey, we've met a subscriber from Xinjiang. That's oh my so God, cool. So What's your name, man? Uh, Dulcian. Awesome. Very cool. Hey, can you help me tell everybody to stay awesome? Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Always. That's so <laughs> cool, man. So we're actually in uh, San Francisco, Chinatown. We bumped into a subscriber. So uh, can you do me a favor? Tell everyone to stay awesome. Stay awesome. Awesome, man. Thanks. All right. Can you hey. help me say stay awesome? Stay awesome. Hey, yeah. I bumped into some subscribers here. Yeah. Can you please help me and tell everyone to stay awesome? Yeah, stay awesome. Oh, that's great. So, nice. can you help me? Um, can you can you say stay awesome? Stay awesome. Hey, just for stay awesome. Still, stay awesome. <laughs> this is actually our good friend Anthony, subscriber. Can you help us say stay awesome? Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Can you tell everybody in Chinese to stay awesome? Okay, that's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, awesome. You guys did an amazing job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really awesome to meet you. Just a little selfie video. Stay these, awesome, I guess. Well, these guys flew all the way from Salt Lake City in Utah, right? Yeah. That's that's amazing. All the way to LA. Thanks. Can you help me tell everyone to stay awesome? Stay awesome. Stay awesome. <laughs> Nico Bamboo stay awesome. Stay awesome. Let's do it together. One, two, three. Stay, stay awesome. awesome. Together, I'd like you to help. Can you help me say stay awesome? <laughs> okay. Just. Okay, say when? Uh, just say stay awesome. Stay awesome. Right. right, can you tell everyone to stay awesome? Well, it's something that everybody knows and everybody has to do. Stay awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Can you say stay awesome? Stay. Can you help me say stay? Stay. Awesome. Awesome. Good job. Stay, stay awesome. awesome. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Uh, can you help me say stay awesome? Stay awesome. 